Oh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We are live from Las Vegas, Nevada at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino, and it is time for some Rainbow Six Siege action. The U.S. Nationals has been well underway. Day one showing the top eight teams from the Eastern and Western Conference, and now that has been whittled down to four teams as we find ourselves for the Eastern and Western Conference Finals. My name is Jump, your host here, bringing you all of the action over the course of this weekend. And we are at the Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel Analyst Corner. Joined with me, I have Rams and I have Veli. Gentlemen, yesterday we had a great opportunity to see some of the best North American teams take the stage, but now only four remain. Yeah, yesterday it was a bloodbath, but today, you know what, it's the gauntlet. Four teams are coming in and only two are coming out to play in the finals. But one team that's really standing out to me in particular is a team that's going to be playing next, Space Station Gaming. Taking out arguably the best team on paper that everybody thought was going to win the event in Dark Zero, Space Station by far looked like the best team. Yeah, Dark Zero yesterday looked like a shell of their former self. There's a lot of adjustments they need to make, uh, but in the upcoming months, I'm confident that they will improve as a team. We saw them getting better during the game versus Space Station, but Space Station seemed to be too strong for them, just to their consistency and everything. We also saw Reciprocity with a great showing. They faltered a little bit on Villa versus Luminosity. They seemed to be sort of out of whack, but then we did see them bring it back and take it to overtime, and then on Border, they just kind of cleaned it up. You know. I think the important thing to learn about this, we take a look at Dark Zero and how they lost, and we can't just run around and say, hey, these guys are trash. No, this is a talented group of individuals. This is, you know, a god squad. But it takes time for these guys to really get in the same ideology when it comes to strategies. Well, yeah. let's go ahead and take a look back at what happened yesterday. We had four matches for the Eastern and Western Conference playoffs. And, of course, that got whittled down. Let's see how it happened. Seconds to go and miles away from the diffuser, this will be tough. He sees one, takes him down, gets swung on from the other side. Crazy knows he's playing behind the bomb chassis, and Crazy will win at the clutch. We're down to only Bosco. What a find, though. Eight seconds left now to try and plan it as he interrupts Typer in the middle of it. There's the top. Do we see a push on DZ? Yes, we do, but he misreads it, and SSG gets the clutch. Clutches it for Space Station Gaming, and they take a 2 0 win. Waxing is above. Bailiff out. He'll get it. Does he have time, though? He's got a quarter of the way left. Laxing's a three armor, but it's going to come down to the wire. He's got plenty of time and reciprocity. What a play! Oh my god, Laxing. Only 10 seconds remain. They're going to have to try and frag out of their minds to close this out. Bolo with two. I didn't think he could get him. What? Oh, oh my, TSM! What is that fragging power? Bolo just runs down main and kills everyone. Hot out the gate, we saw action at the Rainbow Six U.S. Nationals. And even though it wasn't our semifinals, finals, anything of that grand sort, it was just players that were fragging out. And gentlemen, we definitely had some ones that came to play yesterday. Yeah, when it comes to teams that came to play, SSG, TSM, Reciprocity and Sonics all came to play, and that's why they're here today in the semifinals. Yeah, we could talk about the teams all day. To me, it's the individual performances. See Nix, Laxing, Vertical, Bosco. Everybody really showed up in TSM for the last match of the day. Seeing Achieved and Merc go off like that, some of the best individual performances we've ever seen at USN. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the bracket and how yesterday actually played out. Like we said, we had the Eastern Conference and Western Conference playoffs. It was three two O's, and Team Reciprocity, of course, narrowly losing in map number two, had to send it to a map number three to force themselves into today. We've got the Easter Conference Finals with Sonics versus Space Station Gaming first, and then following that, it will be TSM versus Team Reciprocity. We'll get to that one in a second, but gentlemen, let's talk a little bit about the Sonics and Space Station Gaming and how they were able to make it towards today. So when it comes to the Sonics in particular, we saw a much better performance out of Super than I think anybody really actually anticipated. Yeah. 
Um, and then we saw, we had, you know, Slebin coming in huge, but we actually have Space Station up first, so you want to take that? Oh, fine. Space Station Gaming, okay, it was pretty much, I'm not going to say luck on their side, but they were pretty fortunate to be the most methodical team in regards to tactician and strategy. They went against Dark Zero, who had a few team changes, and they're starting to come together, which takes time. SSG, they stuck together ever since they picked up Canadian from Evil Geniuses, and it really showed, and I really love how Thinking 8 has been quiet, but deadly, especially when it comes to entry. Yep, they seem like they seem very, very organized. Bosco yep. with huge clutch plays, but they all have clutch potential. We just happened to see Bosco going off immensely yesterday. Let's talk a little bit about the Sonics, though. We can pull the Sonics roster up here on your screen and kind of see what they're bringing to the table. Super, Goddess, Neptune, Slebin, and Gomfi. And we talked about it. That was the thing you highlighted yesterday, Veli, about Goddess's role at the end of rounds. And she certainly was able to show that yesterday. Yeah, Goddess, she's such a good backbone support for this team. But what makes her job easier, in this particular tournament, there's a lot of familiarity with inter-region play. So that means it's a wild question mark when it comes to Slebin and Gonfi. They get the kills, leave it up to Goddess to close out the rounds, and she's such a good objective player. To follow up on that, like Super's IGLing has been great, and his yep. overall gameplay has been good. And then on top of that, when you're talking about Slebin and Gonfi, there was a big question mark as to how they would perform in a tournament like this, but they look like the dynamic duo going in, you know, playing off of each other, yeah. seeming like they have all of their coordination worked out. And Sonic's looking very composed and organized in, in, all, in both the maps we saw them play before. So we talk about Goddess, Slebin, Gonfi, and Super. To me, the most dangerous person on this team is Neptunes. Neptunes had a pretty quiet day yesterday. So imagine if he actually shows up. This Sonics team is just looking better and better as time goes by. All right, that's the Eastern Conference. We're not going to go too deep on that one because we've got to wait for it a little bit later. Let's flip the script and go to the other side, though. We've got the Western Conference Finals. We've got TSM that showed up huge yesterday. And Reciprocity that narrowly lost that map number two. It went the full 15-round distance. And I want to spend time on Reciprocity first because they, despite the fact that showed up and came out with the win, they were looking a little weak based on the intel that they were trying to get for themselves. Yeah, they looked very discombobulated on yeah. Villa. Like, they're, like they just, they looked like they didn't know what they were doing. It's like, it's almost as if they, it was the first time they'd ever played the map, but given the roster changes, it kind of was the first time they played that map. Yeah. And when you talk about reciprocity, you have to mention that Vertical is the only player from Team USA still in this tournament. I would like to point out that even though I was hyping up Laxing Vertical all day yesterday, I was waiting for a moment for them to have a 2v-x scenario. That comeback was sparked by the 2v4 between Vertical and Laxing. Also, Nick's joining this team. We saw a little bit of road changes coming in from him, but once he got comfortable, he's with such a like-minded group Nyx was my standout yesterday on Villa. And I mean, we got to talk about this, and this was something you highlighted yesterday. Vertical's ability to be allowed to not have to be that hard carry role. Because he finds himself in a situation now where he's allowed to take a step back and let Nyx fill in that entry frag role, it gives him that chance to actually assess the situation, have a more IGL opportunity, and because of that, some of those clutch rounds were specifically based on the shot calls that he created for himself. We talked about it yesterday when it comes to calculated aggression, and now Vertical has the opportunity instead to, you must take this fight right now, maybe you can wait until the right time to take yeah. the fight, and then you're guaranteed to win it. We saw plays on uh, Border when he was Legion, doing some of those rotations up really and down nice. the stairs with the, ro with the impact grenades. You know, that's the kind of calculated aggression that we want to see out of a, such a smart player. All right, well, let's flip the script, though, and go over to TSM, Veli. I know you've got a lot to say oh, about the TSM guys. Let's fly that roster and see what we've got bringing to the table. Achieved, Bolo, Merc, Geo, and Timzy HD. Now, I want to start with Timzy HD because he's coming in as a substitute and was by far one of the most consistent players. And if I'm, if I'm uh, saying this correctly uh, from the stats that I had, has the most plants of yep. anybody in the tournament thus far. Tim Z, I believe he has almost as many plants as he has kills at the moment, but asking for him to fill in for Pojo, man, his role doesn't have to be, hey, go out there and get these kills. We have achieved Molo, Burke, and Geo on your side. Your job is that much easier. So play it slow, get the plants down, hard breach some walls, and everything's going to be easy from here on out. When it comes to Timzy, we definitely saw him playing the role that he's supposed to be playing. Yep. Lots of droning, all the all the you know the diffuser plants, everything like that. He definitely had some opportunities to put some more put some more stats up on the scoreboard. But I think that a lot of that comes down to first game jitters, first first land experience jitters. Now that he has had practice on land and knows what to expect, I think that we're going to see him play even better today. 
Now, of course, not only do we have all of the opinions of these analysts, but we also need to make sure to hear about your opinion at home. Because, of course, your opinion matters, and we want to hear it. We want to see it. The players are definitely taking over to Twitter, and we want you guys to do that, too. Make sure you use the hashtag R6USN to get yourselves involved in the conversation and potentially end up on the ticker. And we might even have a, uh, a little snippet a little bit later from what one of the players said. But, gentlemen, we're going to get ourselves started in a little bit shortly. Eastern Conference, I want to move back to that because that's where we're heading. It is going to be a slugfest between the Sonics and Space Station Gaming. Do you guys have some early thoughts on what we think this is going to play out as? I'll let you take that one first. SSG, I just feel like they're just more of an experienced team. They're just a better team. Yeah, you know, Dark Zero was a big question mark, but SSG, they just came back from Croatia in the finals. SSG, they've always been near the top. Yeah, they've struggled a lot, kept a lot of games close, but this time this team looks different and they want to win. Yeah, I... I know that when it comes to me in predictions, I haven't been had very good luck, He's but terrible. I but my luck turned around. I'm up ten dollars today. Okay. And my first prediction was correct. The army did win the branch battle. All right. So, well, hopefully your your gambling skills are improving, which means your analytical predictions could be doing so as well. That's awesome. enough for us for the pre-show. It's time to get ourselves started for the Eastern Conference Final. We are ready to go down to our beautiful stage with our fantastic host, Jackie Jing. Take it away. Thanks so much, you guys. Oh my gosh, yesterday was thrilling. Multiple overtimes, flashy plays. Are you guys excited? I like that. You all ready for the semifinals? Me too. <laughs> but first, we have to meet our teams. Take a look. Bring in our teams. First, the Sonics. Their opponents, Space Station Gaming. like to ask Bosco and Lycan to step forward, please. So, I have a special message for you both. We know that you are missing your college graduation that is happening today. Instead, you chose to be here to compete. We appreciate that very much. Since you cannot share this moment with your classmates, friends, and family, we want to take a moment to recognize your academic achievement. If we can please get a round of applause from the audience for our two graduates. <laughs> Standing ovation, completely appropriate. We are very proud of you both. All right, though, it's time to get to some action. You guys ready? You want this first match to start? All right, let's send it back to the boys. 
Thanks a lot, Jackie. And again, congratulations to you both. Video games are great, and esports is certainly a pleasure. But the fact that you stayed in school and were able to grind it out and find yourselves on stage today, kudos to you, and make sure that you keep that going forward. To everybody at home, stay in school, kids. It's a really good thing. Welcome back to the desk. I'm Jump. I've got a Rams. I've got a Veli. Gentlemen, academics aside, we're back to video games, and let's talk about it. We've got the Eastern Conference Finals coming. We touched upon it a little bit, but I want to get right down to the meat and potatoes. Sonic's Space Station Gaming. Space Station Gaming, 100%. So when you take a look at both of these rosters, Space Station Gaming, this is a fully stacked deck, and I feel like Sonic's are a few cards short. Look at everyone on this roster. Bosco, Rampy, Canadian. There's legacy behind every single one of these players. And they're all having standout performances so far this event. But still, I'm gonna see more from Rampy. Rampy is usually the fragger, the standout player who always goes off and, and just projects SSG in the lead. He needs to come out today. Regardless of SSG's past performances, they are a team that always wants to get better, are always trying to be the best. They are a hungry team. They are always improving, and I think that to become Team USA would be the first step for them towards greatness. Well, they have an obstacle standing in front of them. It is the Sonics, or as we dubbed them yesterday, the Susquehanna Super Sonics, taking a look with Super, Goddess, Neptunes, Slebin, and Gomphy. And I want to spend a little bit to talk about that duo of Slebin and Gomphy, because as you have noted, Rams, there's certainly ones that we need to be looking out for. Yeah, Slebin and Gomphy are a dynamic duo right now. I said it earlier, they seem to work together very well at pinpointing exactly where they want to entry and having the proper utility at the right time. That's one thing that, about Sonics as a whole, is their utility usage to gain fragging potential as opposed to just using their gun skill. Well, not only do we have Slebin and Gomphy, uh, I mentioned you guys a little bit earlier about taking the conversation over to Twitter and talk about the US Nationals. Well, Super, um, he actually uh, took to Twitter himself oh and decided to see we can pull that one up and uh, you know he says we play SSG tomorrow these guys actually shoot back so should be a good one so not only a shot to the team that they defeated but definitely some kudos to Space Station Gaming and what they were able to do and what they could potentially do today. Yeah Super and the rest of the Sonics team they have a large chip on their shoulder right now being relegated over to CL and then beating Temple Storm that was the first step. Super, he used to be on Rogue, used to be on top teams throughout the entirety of his career. Nowadays, he's on the lower end and he wants to shoot back up to the top. First step is being Space Station and hopefully soon, Pro League. All right, it's time to get ourselves into it though, ladies and gentlemen. It is a best of three awaiting and the map Veto is locked and loaded and ready to fire. We can take a look at what the maps are going to be in just a little bit of a second. Of course, uh, making sure that we take a look at the magnificent stage that is uh, at our disposal this year. And let's check out these are final map vetoes, bans, and picks. Villa and Bank take it off the table. Sonics with the clubhouse first pick. Space Station on the rebuttal with a coastline, then taking away Cafe and Border, which means none other than Consulate will be our decider map. First thoughts. Pretty odd. Clubhouse, yes, Sonics, they were pretty strong on yesterday, but also taking a look at my notes, Space Station Gaming recently, they're 10 and one. That might, that might come back to bite them. Yeah, there's a level of confidence that Sonics have to exude for this matchup. In all honesty, there's a lot of doubt on the side of Sonics, and obviously that they they want to prove all the haters wrong. So they have to stick to their guns and play on the maps that they know, and not try to necessarily, you know, t t try to take Space Station Gaming out of their comfort zone because yeah. Space Station Gaming is always in their comfort zone. So you know, I think that. The, on, the, on, the other hand, on the other hand, though, I think that SSG could vastly underestimate the Sonics and what they're actually capable of, given their performance yesterday. And I think that that's something that we have to make sure that we keep ourselves aware of. Yes, Space Station Gaming has the experience. Of course, adding Canadians experience as well, that's something that we have to add to the table. But yesterday, Sonics proved very quickly that they have the capabilities to hang with the rest. And I don't feel like we're, or I do feel like we're gonna see some surprises out of them in this best of three. See, that's the beauty about this team. Everybody looks at Super and say, hey, you're our leader. We're going to listen to what you say. Just say it with your chest a little bit. Super makes all of these calls and changes. First, everyone, they're playing back in base, playing close to each other. And Super says, hey, Slebin, Gonfi, Neptunes, run around, get kills. Me and Goddess, we're going to do our things in the back. And they did it so well to come back. They were able to adapt so well to Temple Storm to where Tempo, they didn't know what hit them. All right, you have multiple players that are ready to rock and roll. Last one, no analysis, no anything. Who's the MVP of this match? Veli, you're starting. Bosco. Bosco, 
It has to be Bosco. All right, we got a Bosco times two, and we also got two new casters. They're going to be coming and ready to call the action for the Eastern Conference Finals. We've got Emzo, we've got Intero. Gentlemen, let's get these matches underway. Thank you so much. Well, the analysts seem to think that this one is done before we've even played a single round, and it's going to be the Bosco show start to finish. I don't know if it's going to be quite as much of a blowout as they would guess. I mean, it depends if Rampy shows up. I think if he does, uh, this could really go, like, just steamroll for SSG. If he doesn't, you never know. Sonic's act as a little bit of a wild card here. I mean, nobody really thought the Sonics were going to get past Tempo Storm yesterday. And not only did they, but they did so in a 2-0 fashion, mind you, taking every single round to get there in two 8-7 victories. True, true. But Space Station have looked like one of the best North American teams, period, over the last six months to a year, if you want to go all the way back to the Invitational in February. So they toppled Dark Zero, everybody's favorites, to win this entire event. Who is going to come out of the Eastern Conference as the champions and go? into the finals tomorrow. That's going to be the question. Is it going to be Space Station? Is it going to be the Sonics? Well, put your hands together. We got our first match of the day between these teams, and we'll be starting on Clubhouse. This might be a bit of a slugfest here if the Sonics play anything like they did yesterday. Could it get to all three maps? You never know. Operator bans should be interesting here on Clubhouse, though. We did have quite a few hard breacher bans previously when we played on this. See if we end up with a Maverick first to go. Certainly. A strong possibility, and there he goes. Good night, Maverick. So, not unusual at all for Clubhouse. Question is, do we get a second Breacher banned or not? That's the biggest question. And we do not cap Tao when he was left unbanned yesterday. It was quite a problem for teams to deal with, so not a surprise to see him go as well. But it does mean the two other hard Breachers available. Hatches should get opened as needed. And Echo going as well. Not uh, a big surprise. I mean, nothing really crazy here. Pretty much the standard bands for Clubhouse that you need to do to make sure you can play securely. Maestro is going to be available since Mare was the last to go. But uh, Maestro, I mean, pretty good on this map, but Echo's a little bit more of a pain to deal with in some areas. I think most people are used to dealing with the common evil eye spots at this point, but it does mean you need to bring Zofia and sometimes potentially even Ash to make sure you can take out those evil eyes because, well, you still need to, even if you know where they're located. We will see uh, at least the Zofia for now. Also does a bit of double duty on Cash as well to help with dealing with the bandit tricking. So you will get a bit of that as well. But Church, Arsenal to start with, but teasing that they might go Jim with the castle pick, sixth pick over to the mute. They will have, of course, the, both the hard breachers here, anticipating that uh, whether it be top floor or bottom, you really can get good use out of both of them. No reason Attack not to bring them unless, of course, you need bomb. someone on something else. Expect to see both hard breachers used every round, unless there's some kind of goofy pocket strap that gets brought out that yeah. we you know, haven't seen before because you know, we've, we've even seen teams run all three Hard Breachers if they don't get banned on this map. We've seen it on Bank as well. When you have to deal with walls, hatches, anything you want. You look at Dirt, for example. Yeah. You've got the wall and Dirt that you want to open up as Thermite. You want to get the Church Wall as Thermite. Hibana, you're going to get the three hatches if there's an issue there. If you get an early pick, you might lose one of your two Hard Breachers. You've got the added insurance of a third. Obviously, this is a moot point since Maverick is banned for this particular matchup. Five seconds to go. But I think it's uh, I think it's it's similar to Bank. You have to ban a Hard Breacher, period. Capitao is such an influential operator on almost every map, though he does have his strengths, and Clubhouse tends to play to those strengths. He doesn't have an explicit counter. At least not yet. We always like to reference. Wamai is coming at some point, but He's not available yet. We don't even have Amaru and Goyu available, so we're still, we're still a ways off. But for the time being, Capitao has no counters, so you can't stop those, those fire bolts from going off. Yeah. And they're great for getting control of garage. They're great for getting control of construction. They can do a lot of nasty work in bathroom if the site is gym bedroom. Behind the, the black box inside the uh, yep. church as well. Very correct. So round number one between the Sonics and Space Station. As you noted, a church defense downstairs. And for the Sonics, they're going to keep their bodies on site. Safe, smart move. Yeah. Play tight on the actual site. You don't need to commit too much. You don't need to overextend. You know how map control is going to work. You really want to read into their attack first. Take some time to, to basically strategize because SSG aren't necessarily going to use the same strats they've always used. They're going to try and bring things specifically to deal with the Sonics. And the Sonics, of course, are going to try to adjust to that. Now, of course, the person to watch after yesterday's matches, the Sonics, is Slevin. If Slevin goes off and is able to do his thing, that worked out very well for the Sonics. 
If he doesn't have such a great day, perhaps uh, some other member of the Sonics will have to step up. Drones are coming down now, though, to try and feel things out now they've got top floor control, the top two floors. They can start to make progress, open up a bit of the floor. Sometimes this is Buck, sometimes this is Pledge. There's pros and cons to both, but he, of course, still has two grenades and punk either way as well. Could see them used on this wire or potentially uh, some of the angles to even try and deal with Bandit if there was one inside. There's just a mute that's going to stop the church wall from the time being. Canadian on his newfound support duties will open it up and giving calls in quite an aggressive manner. He's going to get the very first kill of these series. You can see he's fired up, and it's on Super, who peeks the doorway into Moto and gets dusted by the Thermite. Well, Canadian on very low HP. Not a great person to be carrying the diffuser if he goes in with that low of HP, but at the moment, he's holding down Moto just fine, so not a big deal. And now some top-down pressure coming as well as blue. The one thing that will work in his favor with how limited his HP is is that as long as the lesion mines are out of the way and he doesn't have to worry too much about a maestro cam, there's no denial that's going to kill him. And well, he's going for the plant as another body from Sonics will hit the floor. Watching the blue hatch, but it's a swing from Gumpy and Slebin, but they're just trading out right now, and it definitely favors SSG in a 1v three. Diffuser doesn't go down as Canadian is removed from action, but Bosco drops onto the site and Space Station will take round number one. Well, if it's a, a semi-clutch type situation, you still got Bosco left alive, you, you know that's probably the round for SSG. The man comes through time and time again. That was still, again, the problem I said with Canadian going with low health, but you know what? There was still enough members alive after that trade. I don't think the Diffuser being lost in sight was a big deal at that point. It's still not a great situation, but kudos to Canadian for being brave and trying to make the play. Anyways, we saw a lot of that yesterday, the, the Bosco-Canadian combo and just getting those plants down, playing objective. We'll see if they can do that uh, for the top floor sites when they get up there, but Church again for the second attempt here. They're going to try and change things up a little bit this time with the kite. The mute jammer didn't really work great because he wasn't going to be able to trick it and the Thatcher took out that quick to make the church wall not a problem. So instead, gonna bring something that could deal with it a little more dynamically, okay? or potentially just secure the hatches, uh, especially the moto hatch you can trick. I am a little confused as the way that Sonics played that. It seemed very passive, way too passive. They didn't really ever establish any true control. So you had the mute that was playing on the wall inside a church. You have the mute jammer down. You can't really mute juggle or mute trick the way that you can with an electric claw or with a bandit battery. So once the Thatcher MP goes off, there goes church wall. The only real way to stop that is to swing out from Moto, which Super tried to do, but he wasn't even that aggressive. He just peeked the doorway. Or in a common area that's referred to as Pulse Spot, which is the first panel of the soft wall at the bottom of the stairs, which is when you go down the stairs directly on your left, near the hatch that you drop from Kitchen. You can return fire from there, and if you have somebody playing in that spot, be it a Pulse, be it a Valkyrie, be it anybody, you can see the whole side of Church Wall and the Moto drop as well. There was nobody from Sonics there that bothered to pressure until it was too late, which I believe was when Slebby and Goffy, or Slebin and Goffy got in the action. I almost merged their names together there because they did come as a package deal. But he had the Valkyrie playing in blue rather than playing over by Arsenal. So I was a little confused as to what they did. They're going to get a second crack at it. They've changed some things up. I think you're right. I think the Kaid's a better pick than the Mute. We'll see if it actually does anything here as you also see a change from Space Station. So no Sledge. They've got a Buck on the board instead. Everything else is pretty standardized. I appreciate seeing uh, Rampy's caution too. Despite the fact that they're droning out the top two floors, you saw him checking angles. You saw him pre-firing spots. He is very prepared for Sonics to do something unexpected and come at them. Now Sonics again still very, very, very passive during this first minute here. All them sitting on site. No one trying to do anything crazy. Just again, trying to look at any openings they can respond to. But I like Space Station's caution. They don't want to just take it for granted that Sonics is a team that I, I'm sure they think they could beat just fine. You don't want to take that for granted. You, you've got to go in this just completely swinging. Make sure you take every single round you can. I mean, the, the shorter you can make the match, uh, you know, the, the more you can prepare for the next one. But at the same time, they are going to start working their way down towards side a little bit here. They need to clear some of these hatches. That is a Kite Electric Claw on the kitchen hatch they want to deal with. I think Nate still has two EMPs to help with that. Well, I, I do think it is worth reminding people that we are playing on the older patch, which is when the Kaid Electric Claw radius was significantly smaller. May not affect a lot of the walls in this particular map, just a lot of them are two walls anyways, but Rampy though, He's, he's showing some sledding <laughs> down first. I love the face cam reactions, because you can tell that this is personal for Space Station. Rampy obviously <laughs> very happy as he's doing his uh, his best Clark Kent impersonation with those glasses, let's be honest. A very fashionable look, very fashion forward for a gamer. No gamer wear here. 
So you've opened up the hatches. You have no ex Kairos left. Most of your hard destruction is done. You got about a minute to go. You still got the Kaid playing safely inside a church, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a church take at all for Space Station. So where are they going to go? They're likely going to hit Blue in the back of Arsenal with Bosco watching from above. Some drone work allows him to know that the Maestro of Goddess is playing safely towards the back boxes. Frag Grenade goes down. It's going to down Super. Do they know? That's the real question. There are no points, so you're not assured of whether or not you got a kill. It's not secured. Hot drop through the hatchet. It's a common plant spot for Canadian, trying to lure Goddess out of her position. Neptune's falls to Fultz. Super has not been picked up yet. Thinking Nate has the cross. This is a march of death right now for SQ. And how about a flawless round? Space Station, two in a row. What a fantastic end of the round. Canadian again, braving, just going in. I mean, technically, yeah. Trusted he's his cover. team. Yeah, he's got cover from above, but he is solo in terms of being in the site by himself with two players that could potentially swing on him. It's... It, Total trust in your cover from the hallway and from above to hit their shots. And they did. And that's what matters is he acts as bait at that point. He knows, you know, if I die, my team will follow this up. But I trust that they will cover me as best as they can. And I mean, I like how objective focused they are. They're not just, let's go in and go and try and get some picks. Let's see if we can get some kills and soften up the site. It's, let's get in our positions. Let's get this plant down and then kill anyone who tries to stop that. It, it's very effective here, and so far, and I mean, Space Station's off to a great start. You see uh, the players there looking very happy with that last round, and rightly so. Sonics, on the other hand, trying to be reactive is not working, so it's, it's time to change sites. They're going to go to a site where they could be a little bit more dynamic up here in Cash. We'll see if they could Bandit trick it, uh, if they're going to go for that. Slevin's going to be one to do that. We're not going to see Super fly away like we had in the past, trying to Bandit trick that Cash wall. But he is going to be on the mute. It's going to help a little bit with denying some drones, potentially. Get some, uh, deny some of that intel that worked so well for Space Station last round in terms of their execute actually working out. We are going to have Rampy again on the Buck. He's not going to be going switching over to the Sledge or anything. And Buck is a better choice here because then you can't approach from below if you want to, whereas you cannot do the same thing in the Sledge. So overall, some good operator choices. We'll see if Canadian's able to go to sprint in for a plant, but Neptune's is going to be that maestro on top of the uh, catwalk that it can't be easily taken out the same way without the Capital. So he'll be a force to be reckoned with if they feel that's a necessary part of their take. I wonder if with the Capital ban being from SSG, they're just going to forego garage control or maybe even just go through garage a different way. There are teams, and Bosco has done this a number of times on teams he's played on. Uh, we've seen it from SSG before, which is when you use the ex Kairos of Hibana to open up portions of the garage wall so you can control the window rotate. That's by the cash wall. Try to follow along which is the cash wall right here. So you'll open up some of the garage panel, and then, well, what are you going to do? You catch anybody on the rafters that tries to rotate on out. Canadian should be able to get this wall easily. There you go, it'll open up, and he'll go on to repel duty. He and Fultz becoming fast friends since joining this team, and they're going to work in tandem now, and the wall doesn't require much utility to get open. I know you noted yesterday in one of our matches that, hey, if you used a lot of utility, but you still got the wall open, that's okay. This, I think, is far more of a success because you didn't use it. I mean, that's more utility you can use on the actual site. And utility is important here because you need to get people out of their positions. They start to get into fixed angles that they can use against you, especially tight angles that you can't fight as easily, like Slevin's playing. They need to be able to force people out of those. Having uh, an extra impact on his lifeline there, for example, will definitely help with that if they need to open up a hole to give themselves an angle or even potentially finish off a kill. Once again, a lot of patience from the Sonics as we approach the halfway point of round number three. It's a crack at a different site this time as the two attempts at church down below did not work very well for the uh, Pennsylvania-based team. Fultz will miss just a tiny portion of his shots onto one of the defenders that rotated at the top of red, and he'll open up some of the soft walls with Rampy now, giving himself a quick exit. Canadian entering through over on construction, so Space Station have decided, hey, let's go from the other angle now. We don't necessarily even need to take the wall that we had opened up first. EMP goes down on the Canadian, and he'll open up the wall. Slevin will get the opening kill for the Sonics. That bodes well for them. And it's on to Fultz, who's playing by the open breach on Cash Wall. You've still got Rampy and Canadian looming inside of construction. Plenty of time for them to work with if they really want to. But nobody from the Sonics is giving SSG anything. This is excellent patience from the Sonics. Will be their undoing, though. Frag Grenade goes in to land at the feet of Goddess, but do no damage at all as she was up on a desk. A second missed opportunity for Bosco. Oh, Goddess wins a heads-up gunfight, and she gets two for her trouble before being dispatched by Rampy's Frag Grenade. Quarantine for the time being inside of construction. It's going to be a Red Stairs retake with Rampy watching. He knows there's one there. Can't connect on two, thinking Nate gets it. 
Will they be able to capitalize on the rest? Oh, all of guns from Space Station are coming alive, putting us into a 1v1 with Rampy and Slevin. It's gonna be a battle to the death. Diffuser is down and Rampy will win it. And despite trailing most of that round, it's three in a row for Space Station. Well, now we're seeing Rampy come alive. Gets his shots hit, hits his grenades. He's on fire on that buck. Definitely working out for him better than it did on the sledge even. So, I, like I said, if, if Rampy comes alive, SSG just gonna steamroll this just because you've got Bosco who absolutely shows up. You've got Canadian who knows his job and gets it done. You've got great support from thinking Nathan Fultz. And if Rampy's there to get the kills on top of that, there's not a lot you can do to fight back. But as you mentioned, the patience from Sonics, they are trying to play smart, but they, again, they are playing passive. And all the time that they sat there playing passive and not fighting back, they let a lot of uh, walls get open uncontested. They had the double hard breach. They didn't really even have to use it, just two EMPs and uh, you know some stuns from Sophia, and that was it to open everything up that they needed to. And that was really what kind of gave the opportunity for a lot of those kills to go down. But there were some good trades back from the Sonics. They were able to actually take it down to 1v1. They played as smart as they could, tried to communicate, just tried to like find opportunities to capitalize on the attackers pressure into the site like once they actually came in. But again, Rampy was able to play his game, win his gun fights, and just great support from the rest of the team. This something different gonna have to come out here from the Sonics, because we mentioned this could be a pretty defender-sided map go. with Maverick banned. I mean, even more so with both uh, Hard Breachers banned, but still, this is, this is where they should have some advantage here. Now, uh, I gotta wonder though, Attack now that we're going back to Cash again, Neptune's going to be playing the same Maestro on top of the Catwalk. Will they decide to find a way to pressure it this time, or are they just going to go with the same attack yet again? Because, well, that'll be a little bit more predictable this time. They'll read into it, they'll know how to fight it a little bit better at least. We could see even maybe a little bit of roam down a lounge or something like that to come from a different side if need be. Or we actually might even see a Slebin uh, playing over in the... Uh, Jim bedroom side potentially. No, looks like he's coming back, but we might see a little bit more roam, I think. I, I think playing passive, as you mentioned, is not really working out great. I think they need to do something. And Slevin, as we know, can really be on fire. Let him do let him roam. Let him play something a little bit different if he can, but he was the bandit to try and trick that, but it's not gonna happen here. Another wall opened up very easily for Space Station onto the cash side of things. It's gonna be a cash defense again, as you noted. And they need to do something, you're right. It's very easy for us to look back Attack on things like patience bomb. and say, oh, well, you know, it's impressive that they're not giving anything. It's impressive that they're not contesting. But I think that one of the strengths that the Sonics has as a team is their aggressiveness, yeah. their ability to peak, their ability to take fights. When you have guys like Gonfi and Neptunes and Slevin on that roster who can drop a dozen frags a game consistently, all right, that was some superhuman Kool-Aid <laughs> man-esque breaching there from Rampy. You need to be able to take those fights and win those fights. And right now, they're they're just not winning the fights on the Sonic side of things. They're not. Yeah. That's a major problem. And a lot of it is their reluctance to chase frags. A lot of it is their reluctance to actually engage, really. And that's tough if you're the Sonics. I understand that you want to be patient against a team like Space Station. They are very methodical. They themselves are an exceptionally patient team. Probably one of the most patient in all of NA. But you got to do something. Yeah. This is something, speaking of, that we've seen before. Goddess is down below, and Bosco will get droned down to go get her. Why? Because she's going to try to impact the exothermic charge that gets put onto that construction wall. We saw it work a bit yesterday. It worked perfectly. But, but it was demonstrated. As you mentioned, now they know about it. And that's a oh, problem. Oh, oh that's a problem. real problem here. Rampy oh. completely reads into that. Didn't even need to use his Say hammer. goodbye, Goddess. And there's free passage now into construction. Rampy does his job. Excellent teamwork from Space Station. Drone down. Another will fall to Super as Rampy picks up his second kill. Fultz is there too. And SSG is just dogpiling the Sonics. C4 will go off. Frag grenade tossed over towards Red Stairs. Fultz takes out Gonfi and it's Slevin with a tiny portion of HP on Red. He's just sitting ever so precariously. Spotted, and another flawless round from Space Station. And that was at least three from Rampy that round. He's, he's definitely shut. He, I think uh, he got lit a little bit under his butt from yesterday, just really being the ranked the worst player on this team and a team that was doing so well. He is really trying to make up for it. And, and it is interesting to see the alternation between Buck and Sledge. I think he wanted a little bit more of a silent entry that round, so he went with the Sledge to be able to do, as you said, his Kool-Aid man trick to get through the wall there. It looked like it was just a little bit of a delay in the, uh, the animation or possibly a spectator uh, thing. But either way, he got through nice and quietly to sneak on in in case he had to deal with someone roaming on that side. And just changing back and forth as needed. Jim finally coming out here as 
I mean, Sonics have had no success on either two sides. Yeah, this is really rough waters for the Sonics. On a defender-sided map, one of the most defender-sided in the game, with a Maverick and a Capital ban, Mira and Echo being banned is very commonplace. It doesn't really change the equilibrium of this matchup. You would imagine that it would be still more defender-sided, and right now, SSG are making them look like chumps. And I did want to say one thing. Before the matchup, the desk talked about this. Super tweeted out that these guys actually shoot back, so this should be a good one. Yeah. I would just like to say that that was technically incorrect because they're not shooting back because the Sonics aren't shooting at them at all. It's true, yeah, they, they, are, they are doing the first shot. Thank you for cheering, crowd. I appreciate that. <laughs> it really helps me out. They're so kind. Nice, I'm, nice people. I'm sure most people are here to cheer for Super. I mean, at some point, maybe Space Station will shoot back, but right now the Sonics aren't, so... Yeah. I mean, there was a little bit, you know, maybe the, uh, the previous cash round, but not a whole lot. We'll see if they could do a little bit different in gym, though. I mean, it's a little bit different of a beast to deal with. You don't worry so much about the cash wall. You still, it's still nice to keep it solid if you can. Mm -hmm. It's more about the hot tub wall, and you know that's going to go. It's not quite the juggling act that you're going to get on the cash, but they really didn't pull off anything trying to hold the cash wall. In fact, last round, Slevin lost, lost half his health trying to do it. So it's like maybe they, maybe they could focus their attention elsewhere on this particular site. Just focus on their positioning or maybe, again, playing down below. I, I'd like to see a bit more roam. Maybe a two-man roam to set up for a trade so that if they lose, like, you know, what we saw Rampy able to do last round through the wall, something like that, there's able to be a trade situation set up at least. But, uh, again, it's not looking good here, right? I mean, we're so far looking like a bit of a landslide in SSG's favor because Sonics just haven't really shown much outside of the one close round. I think there's a couple things that I, I could talk about endlessly. And number one, I, I am just genuinely puzzled by what the Sonics are trying to do and why they just don't be singing. They don't seem to be bringing any fight whatsoever to Space Station. They're listless. Rampy has 11 kills. He is single-handedly defeating this team. And I wonder if it's because Rampy at one point had the Pro League record. Bear in mind, this is not Pro League. We have, you know, I'm... Have he wants more some, records. I have created some controversy, I suppose, by saying that I think that there should be separate records for these kind of things. Right now, the record is being head, held by Palu for the most kills in like a single match or whatever, with, uh, was it 27 kills or something like that? Rampy has 11 kills through four rounds. He's looking to get there. If this gets competitive, Rampy could potentially break that record, but he's gonna need a little help from the Sonics, and the only help they've been giving right now is a couple free rounds. So, yeah. they're going to need a much closer match to get up to this point. As with most gym defenses, you're going to see a roam over towards the cash side. There's a drone that's been established at the bottom of the garage stairs, so you can see if somebody's going to peek you, thinking Nate is gonna sit on it for the time being while Rampy drones out the rest of cash. The wall's been opened up by Canadians, so Space Station expending some of their gadgetry just to make sure that they have the maneuverability that they need. Gomby sits all alone inside of the cash portion himself, but at the top of Red Stairs is Slevin. He's gonna get droned out once and then twice again. Still on the top of Red, where's he gonna go? Canadian in to Slevin Peak, because if Slevin peaks, this could be the best opportunity. It's a C4 from below from Neptunes onto Rampy. They still know that the Jaeger is there, but Canadian just narrowly misses out on him as he drones himself in. Teamwork from Space Station could have been better in that particular instance. But the Sonics get their second opening pick of this series. Well, it's, it's an important one with the guy with 11 kills. You kind of want to kill him first. I think that was definitely a great opening pick, and it, was, and it really uh, leaned into how they were droning. They were droning upstairs, but they weren't overly focused on droning downstairs, and I think that hurt them a little bit, something they might try and correct in a future round. But for now, now they're gonna have to play without Rampy, without those nades to be able to help pressure into the site itself. They're gonna have to decide which way to approach from, because uh, there's, everyone's gonna be pretty bunkered inside at this point. There's limited angles through doorways that you can get. You can fight through logistics office as well. Of course, they're gonna have both heavily guarded. You could try and fight some angles here from the hatch, but as you can see, they are somewhat limited as well. So it's just, again, you can see Sonic's playing angles, hoping they can catch Space Station off guard. Canadian just missing out, and he gets stunned by the Zofia of Fultz. Goffy takes out Thinking Nade. Goddess is finished off in a joint effort by Fultz and Canadian. They cannot secure the kill on the Slebin as we see Neptune swing around the corner. The smoke putting in work as Bosco takes out Slebin himself. Bosco dusted as Neptune's peaks early and it's all on the shoulders of Canadian. He finds one as Gonfi rotates, but Thermite is not exactly the operator that you want. In this particular instance, he takes out Neptunes, but he can't get through the doorway, caught on the hinges. And well, finally the Sonics get on the board right after their timeout. Hopefully they've learned something so we can get a closer match between these two. It still came down to a 1v1, so tantalizingly close for SSG fans. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta imagine still 
Sonic's best round was still down to a 1v1. Yep. That's, that's not great. And then it was on their, you know, the, the, the tertiary bomb site, the one that there was, that they were really just kind of like, well, the other two aren't working, let's play that. And now they can't play it again. Now they've got to go back to sites that didn't work. But the plus for them is this is their last defense. So <laughs> at least it'll be over soon for them. But we'll see if they can bring it back a little bit. We've seen some good comebacks, uh, you know, yesterday especially. But... It's, it's going to be tough. Bosco wanting to make sure that they could deal with the roamers a little bit better this time. Going to be bringing the Jackal 6 pick. That should be interesting to see if they actually are going to try a roam this time. You mentioned they should be using their aggression a bit more. They might try to this round, and that might play right into Bosco's 6 pick hands. They are going to at least have the Legion, though, to be able to tell if they're coming, assuming that uh, they throw some of those around to be able to help cover that. They also have Slevin on the Mozzie, something a little new for them to try and deny some of the droning. Because there definitely has been droning coming out pretty heavily from uh, SSG, but also that doesn't stop Jack. And that's, I think that's important to note is that Mew Mozzie combo is great for stopping everyone pretty much but him in terms of catching where you're at. And the drone game has been on point, so anything you can do to stop that is, I think, a smart call. But they are going for the castle upstairs yeah, Rome strat, it looks like. This is something we've seen on display a number of times uh, yesterday, and has become, I don't want to say meta, because it's certainly not meta, but it's definitely not as unusual as it used to be. Castle has seen his pick rate grow in the top levels of competitive Siege, I feel like, over the last year. He's always hovered in the 20% range, maybe edging up slightly to the 20-30% range now. And he's an operator that is very much at the mercy of a bad gun and the site that you're going to play on. So you have to realize that there are a lot of tools to knock him down. There's a lot of sites that don't make a lot of sense with him. It also helps they haven't added a lot of soft breachers to be able to... So Correct. There's still the standard lineup up to Zofia, which was, I think, the newest of the soft breachers, if you count it. Sledge is still a great operator to get rid of him. Cool. Thinking they'd find Super. The mute is dead way early. Playing up top at Jim. I don't know why he peaked that opening to try and engage and contest with Thinking Nade. Maybe he just didn't suspect that it was coming. I'm not entirely sure. But the opening frag for Space Station will put them up to a major advantage for the remaining two minutes of this round. They'll act it out, though. Say goodbye, Gompy, as Rampy gets his kill. Looking like it's a 5-1 for Space Station unless the Sonics are able to do something. Goddess now being tracked on the stairs. She's watching her team die around her. Down she goes, down Slevin goes, and Neptunes will have to drop. Staves off a flawless round for the time being, inside of Armory, but he's going nowhere fast. 5-1 for Space Station, a dominating performance on the first half. They'll now go on to defense. Usually, a 5-1 scoreline is seen from the defenders on Clubhouse, not so through this match. I'm, I'm not seeing possibly the 7-8 uh, scenario that we saw from Sonics yesterday. <laughs> this, is, this is looking like it could be a little bit more one-sided. I'm certainly not writing them off just yet. The side switch could change everything. But from what we've seen in terms of their passive play, in terms of their ability to make plays happen, regardless of which side they're on, they just haven't been doing it. They've, they've tried that last round. Were you just cheering Sonics relegated? I think that's already happened. Need to locate and I mean, and do these guys have a time machine we don't know about? It? It's, well, they, uh, they're certainly feeling the heat now. Crowd, crowd go. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to keep Super on his toes for sure. I'm just waiting for them to build those giant, with the boomsticks like they did at Raleigh, the giant hammers and the people, and they got very creative with it. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it interesting. We are going to see some castle uh, defense upstairs again. This time, of course, the sides have switched. They'll be playing a little bit differently, but uh, we'll see if it works a little bit better. I mean, there was a definitely decent effort last round from Sonics with it, but it was just, it got dismantled so quickly. They are bringing something a little bit different on that, and that's the Vigil, along with the Mute Mozzie. So a lot of drone denial for this. It's really, if nothing else, going to take, a, I would think, a lot of time to try and clear out any roamers there are. Heck, they could even not run any roamers, and it would still take forever for them to clear it out. Yeah. Just because they see those castle barricades, you could mute Mozzie them, and it's like, well, we've got to drone and face check this. The gunners from the Sonics really need to come alive. The story of that first half, as we've said many, many times, was the patience of the Sonics, but patience only goes so far, and then I think you can say pretty credibly that it's, it's the lack of patience and just maybe being scared or timid or whatever you want to call it. 
It's a three-man roam or two-man roam from Space Station up top with Rampy as well as Thinking Nade waiting to possibly confront Slevin as he's going to be your main entry for the Sonics. Canadian losing the Castle Barricade. He'll get the hell out of Dodge as fast as he can over by the bill uh, billiard table. Slevin enters, Neptune's finds Bosco, so this roam-heavy setup that's being done is not working out all that well. Good opening pick for the Sonics. They're gonna need to string a couple of those together, and well, you've got so many people from Space Station that are all off-site that if the Sonics are able to transition quickly, that you could end up with Space Station needing a retake to their death, essentially. Yeah. Neptune's did take a bit of a beating in that altercation, so that's about all you got out of it if you're SSG. Good denial there from the Mozzie Pest. It's big brain time. There it is. And no aim to pull oh, that brain. You can see that Rampy is, uh, yeah, that's, what's what's the typical Ashbane saying? Uh, all aim, no brain? Unfortunately, no it brain. The, it was the other way around he on that one. definitely has no brain yeah. at this point. That's, uh, that's a no aim, no brain kind of play right yeah. there. We've got the nice shot drop from Rampy in there at the chat. Yeah. Canadian getting pressured from the stairs. He's been given away and he'll activate his cloaking device, being very patient. He can't shoot through those stairs. He doesn't really have to worry about too much. Got metal on the bottom of them. Guffy's just trying to do anything he can along with Slevin as they've cleared the top floor, but they need to transition this to the bottom floor. Thinking Nade runs as best as he can. Goffy finds Canadian. Things falling apart for Space Station on what is a good entry from the Sonics. And very close to a flawless round. They only got one more kill to go. Foltz with once again the bullet holes. A castle against five Sonics members. Well, we saw Merc get an ace with an ump yesterday, but it's not going to happen today. Not even close. Not an operator that you want to engage multiple opponents on, especially in heads-up gunfights, and the Sonics will win their very first attack. Still 5-2 for SSG. Well, you know, that, that roam play is always a bit of a long shot. It either works or it doesn't, but good on the Sonics to really dismantle it as well. I mean, they did pretty much what Space Station did, which is just tear it apart person by person. And that's the problem with that setup, is there wasn't any good trade coverage. You saw every person die individually on Space Station, that none of them were ready to set up for something. And so it was just a small gunfight, a small gunfight. Sm just spread out over about two and a half minutes, all down to Fultz left through a bullet hole. And I mean, I appreciate the bullet holes, the trickery, the, the castle barricades, the drone denial. But if you, if you don't hit your shots, if you're getting Attack caught out by players just responding faster than you are, it just doesn't matter. And so it was good to see, as you said, uh, Sonic's shooting first. So there is a chance for so uh, Space Station to shoot back. And uh, we, we seem to have a bit more of a game on our hands. Yeah, SSG did not shoot back for most of that round. So I guess technically his tweet was now correct. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how things transition this round as they go to gym though, rather than cash second. So it's been interesting to see this site slowly, be, you know, kind of go up and down in popularity to kind of oscillate over time as we figure out different ways to play it and different ways to attack it. It's kind of been a bit more of a mixed bag than, I would, than Church or uh, Cash really has been, as those pretty much, both those sites have kind of their standard ways of attacking that haven't changed too much over time. Attackers must locate we'll see if they have anything really uh, crazy to pull here. Rampy's going to be on that Kaid. And uh, we'd seen some of the best Kaid tricking play that we had in the past from, I believe it was Rampy, playing inside Cash, just going nuts with impacts and the uh, ability to hit with those uh, Electro Claws. And now Kaid in this patch, as you mentioned, does have those impact gains still. Yeah. I think you can make a pretty credible argument as to whether or not that was a buff or a nerf. In this case, a lot of people saw it as a nerf because you don't usually use him for three panels. You're still going to bring Bandit yeah. a lot for that. Yes, he can juggle more effectively, but those impacts were so crucial. And in fact, I don't know if Navi wins the Pro League Finals without Kaid having those impacts, if you recall their consulate defense. So Absolutely. it's something to keep in mind as well. And it's really good for this position. We've seen Rampy guard off Cash all by himself in a masterful display of Electroclaw juggling and then impact tricking as well. Of course, for those unfamiliar, Familiar impact tricking is when you use the impact grenade, the which comes in the uh, side equipment of a handful of operators. Here you go, see Rampy has the impact grenade. You throw it at a wall and it blows hey, up totally either the X-Kairos from Hibana or the Exothermic Charge from Thermite on the other side. Basically splash damage that hits yes. uh, breach charge uh, of different different natures. Yeah. It, it works fairly well. Uh, oh. Coffee, though. Goodbye, Bosco. That is a smoke down early, a great early pick. He was just in a wrong position at the wrong time. When these windows are available, you cannot be just out in the open like that. It does always mystify me when these windows get opened up that teams do try to rotate and peek through them when they know that there's going to be people in that direction. But finally, it's a kill from Thinking Nate, who has to try to get back in the kitchen as quickly as he can after he eliminates Super. Off the board is the Thatcher. Castle jumps out. There's no Claymore. Fultz capitalizes, and right back in he goes. It's a little game of peekaboo. 
Slebin will do what he did best yesterday on Clubhouse, which is ascend those main stairs. He'll be joined by Neptunes, who's lost an awful lot of HP in the process. Thinking Nade downs the Ash. Finished off with the shotgun, pulls it out. He'll go back to close range. It's only going to take one bullet to take out the Habana that's playing close angle. Just to the right of Thinking Nate if he does opt to peek. Oh, Plant starting to go down for just a second there, teasing it out. But it seems they're rethinking this here. I mean, they've only got two men and Neptune's on such low health. Can't effectively guard this plant, so they're just baiting it. Thinking Nate tries to draw out Neptune's. Can't really do it. Goddess is lost in the sauce, as the kids say. Match point for Space Station. Well, that was a lot quicker than I expected getting the match point. At least I'm not saying it's over, but that was pretty swift getting here. Looking pretty good for Space Station, who stumbled a little bit that first round, but certainly not the second round. It's odd to see Church be the stumbling point for these teams. Although, uh, to be fair, you know, there was some good attempts on Church. It's just no one's really been able to secure it. So they're going to try one more time for what could be the last. If they're able to figure it out this time. I mean, last time there was the Rome heavy defense that just didn't work. Maybe they won't go with that this time. They are at least teasing the castle. Whether we'll see whether they six pick off that or not. But that does again. They they have to go for the same Attack lineup the that they were last time. That does again hint at the pretty heavy rope. Like I said, though, they can tease that. They can set it up. It does expend a lot of utility to do so. But if you could burn a ton of their time as well, that doesn't give them a lot of time to work with for their actual execute. That forces them into a little more constrained positions that you could use. And it looks like when SSG are able to get a man advantage, if they're able to get some of those early picks, like Supra has been a couple times, it seems like that tends to steamroll into a quick round after that. So they're going to be looking for an early pick, especially if you get a Thatcher. Always useful to pick off early, uh, especially with so many electronics in play between the pests and the, uh, the mute jammers, and heck, even the uh, Vigil who can be affected by that. Yeah. There's a lot of options that the Sonics could have had here, but they just haven't gone with many of them. And I really do think their undoing was they had six cracks at the defense to be aggressive. They didn't take it really ever no. at all. And I know that Clubhouse isn't exactly a map where you can be very aggressive, but let's even just look at round eight that just happened with SSG. What did they do? Well, they get aggressive on the main floor. Foltz jumps out of a window knowing there's no Claymore there and takes out Gomfi. You swing on the main stairs if you're thinking, knowing that somebody's pushing up. Space Station took fights to that fair, they didn't need to take. I think they knew where a lot of players were, though, position-wise, that they didn't have the previous round. Absolutely. And, I mean, the Sonics could have done the same, but they just sat and they waited. Speaking of the Sonics, this is a strategy that they employed downstairs with the Castle Barricades, as was mentioned. It's now going to be Space Station doing similar things on a church defense. Could it be our final round here on Clubhouse before we have Coastline next on deck? We saw Coastline get played by Space Station yesterday as they were victorious over Dark Zero. Canadian is nestled very safely. Nice, snug, and tight on that main floor. I don't feel like he's ever had a lot of success as Vigil, even though he plays it so much. I mean, he's great at burning time, but I, I just don't see him get a lot of kills from this. And, and jumping back to side here seems like a better play. But I mean, if you look at the way that Canadian has been played on both Evil Geniuses and now Space Station over the last seven, eight months, yeah. his job isn't necessarily to get kills. Oh, no, don't get me taking wrong. Some, taking some scorn, you know, or drawing, drawing some scorn, I guess you could say. I would just like to see him be a, a little bit more of a lethal Pest. I mean, I think Vigil's doing his job the best here, as, as you need him to, right? 90 seconds in, and what has Sonic's done? They've taken out a couple castle barricades, they've taken some map control on that main floor, but they've spent utility in the process. There's a lot of drones that have been destroyed, and that's the big thing. The more you lose those, dro those drones, the less opportunity you have to know where the defenders are going to be playing downstairs, because you suspect, rightfully yeah. so, that most of the defenders will be on that bottom floor. But where? Yeah. Is there somebody playing close in church? Is there, is there somebody in blue? You never really know. Luckily, there's not a ton of positions to play, but they are gonna at least try and pressure blue here, it seems. And also they're droning a little bit downstairs, but you know, like you said, a, a little bit less time to work with than they usually have, and a little less utility. Clearing all those castle barricades without a sledge, just, it, it burns up a lot. Yes, technically they didn't need to clear those out once they cleared out all the roamers, but you don't know that. And you certainly don't want anyone sneaking up on you later. It looks like it's going to be a single lone push on Blue from Slevin while the rest of the team hot drops over towards Moto. Shots ring over the head of Canadian as Blue Control is still in favor of Space Station. Flash goes out behind him, won't flash him, but you can see that Thinking Nate is totally blind. He gets down two from Space Station as they look to lock this one out. First map could go in their favor. Gomfi refrags onto Bosco. Rampy and Super trade off. Unable to land his shots as Rampy, so it's a 2v1 with Fultz yet again. UMP in hand. Won't be able to do it. He gets outgunned by Slevin, and the Sonics will be able to stay alive for the time being. Still, match point for Space Station, but another round for SQ.
just church seems und- undefendable at this point, at least with the Rome strategy. I mean, at least at that time they didn't get caught out on the Rome. Canadian just burned time and got away. But, you know, I, I wonder if the utility could be better spent elsewhere. Because the utility, yes, it burned time, but time didn't seem, seem to be the problem for Sonics that round. It was just losing the fights. Some of that was due to losing the fight in blue. Losing, losing blue like that, that control definitely can really backfire because then you can get a lot of pressure from the soft wall that leads into church as well. A Canadian had a nice opening pick from in there, but it wasn't enough to really change the game. Canadian going back to one of old, his old faithful operators as well. While, while I think he has a huge pool of operators he plays, he has a few he plays very well that he, he tends to stick to. And Pulse and Vigil are definitely two of those. He will be able to provide a lot of intel for the team who will very likely not be roaming this time, but now this time, but they'll have that extra intel and the extra utility that I think they'll need. But they will be on a different site. Cash hasn't necessarily been the best bomb site, but SSG have yet to play it. So we don't know how that'll go for them. The gym did go very well. So upstairs so far with a little bit of roam, seems to be working out for him. Still could be our final round. Excellent. We'll need overtime to break match point for Space Station, at which point they could get it back. I know it didn't seem as close, and you called it a little bit earlier, saying that we might not have the same 8-7, 8-7, etc. that we have seen previously from the Sonics. I think that Church being the, played the way it did from SSG was not great, and I think that the Sonics were very precise with how they took Moto control. And then, honestly, a lot of it fell down to gunfights, too. Yeah. I mean, literally, they've been twice as good on attack as they were on defense. Right. But that's not saying much. <laughs> oh, there we go, Rampy. Decided to flip the on switch back on, takes out one of the hard breachers. That's going to make it a, a little bit more difficult if they need to do any trickery with that, but they still have the thermite for the cash wall. Oh no, Canadian. Or do they hit your shots? Do they hit your shots? Oh, come on! Gomfy gets away by the skin of his teeth on what should have been a very, very easy kill for Canadian, and he's going to be kicking himself from that one. But you've been able to do so much damage to the Zofia that, well, you can see it's going to flash red for the rest of this round. Does he dare jump out? There's no Claymore. Super is on drone. There goes a C4. Gomfy comes up. Super had no idea that there was anybody there, so Canadian will re-engage. All it's going to take is one bullet onto the Zofia. Maybe two, who knows? Still low enough. But he won't do any more damage than he's already done. Doesn't overextend at all. Slavin gets called into action. Up blue stairs he goes. Fultz might be able to catch him on Garage. But there's a shot that rings down from the top of red. Fultz sees him, lines up, hits like a truck, why don't you? Gumpy's downed as well. It's got us in a 1v5. They've already got two flawless rounds under their belt. What about a flawless round to send them to map two with an advantage here? Nobody wants to be in the position that she's in. She's not going to win her gunfight. It's Canadian who gets it. A flawless round again. Three on the board for Space Station, and they'll take map number one. A great start for Space Station. They had a little bit of trouble there, just closing it out, but... That doesn't matter at the end of the day. Three rounds lost is not much momentum lost. A great start for Rampy to make up for yesterday and a great start for SSG all around. We could potentially see just two maps again, but I still think there's a strong possibility for three maps, but... Uh... 15 kills for Rampy, and you don't get to see the chat, but we do. Goddess goes, Nate, you're nuts. Or Nate, you're nuts. And then Troy goes, Troy, you're nuts. So paying himself <laughs> some compliments. That was like when he nice shotted himself. Anywho, yeah. the desk is ready to take this one over. And it was a 7-3 for SSG. Let's have him break it down. Thanks a lot for that one, Parker. You want to talk about compliments? Well, uh, I got a chance to watch a couple of those rounds from the venue, uh, walked inside and talked with a couple fans, and on my way back, had a couple do a double take and uh, uh, didn't say anything to me. And as I walked away, I hear, wow, I didn't know Intero was so tall. So there you go. You got a compliment. Officially, <laughs> you look a little bit better than what people think you do. Anyway, welcome back to the Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel Analyst Corner. Of course, I am Jump, not Intero, and I have Rams and Veli. Gentlemen, it was SSG doing what they do best, methodical, and showing that their experience as a unit with that addition of Canadian shows no bounds. Oh, their experience in breaking down um, the strats of Sonics was, was pretty easy to them. There was one round in particular where every time we saw them in CCTV, and them, I mean Sonics, Goddess, she wasn't on Maestro this time around. It was Neptunes. And Goddess, she would be on Castle. We saw her utilize that barricade, and not only in stock, but also bar. It was pretty simple what her game plan was going to be. Um, by pre meleeing that Castle barricade, 11 times. She was able to hit it one more time and stop the hard breach 
to stop Space Station Gaming from getting through and construction to cash. But Rampy, he caught on to that plan really fast, got the wall bang and took her out quite soundly. So that just showed how much better Space Station were in regards to stopping every counter that Sonic's had. Yeah, SSG did an excellent job VOD reviewing for Clubhouse in particular. I'm assuming that because Sonic's played Clubhouse so much, they left it open on purpose so yeah. that they would have the chance to play against Sonic's on it. They also did a great job during the VOD review of pinpointing what was winning Sonic's a lot of those rounds. And I have to think that banning Capital was the play for Space Station. Capital was utilized yesterday versus Tempo so they could get lots of free kills utilizing utility from that operator, not only with the Firebolts, but also with the smokes for plant concealment. And then on top of that, um, they were able to anticipate, like you said, the, the construction castle barricades yeah. and the way that Goddess would drop down the hatch, throw the impact grenade up to deny the wall from being opened up. And once they read into those things, it forces Sonics into heads up engagements versus SSG, which they are at the moment superior. And I think that that, you touched upon it, doing the VOD review, it's just important in these big tournaments, it's just as important when you have Review, when you have things to review on your opponent that you do that. The positional advantage that SSG was able to create was great. And you talked about this a little bit of SSG knew where Sonic's defenses were each yeah. and every step of the way. And I love the fact that they even, they, they isolated Neptunes and Raptors in Garage and was like, okay, if you have Maestro and Evil Eyes, we're gonna come in from the back. We're gonna send one person in the front towards CCTV and we're just gonna lay the smack down every chance we get. And also, Rampy. I said in the pre-show, Rampy has to show up. Rampy was 11-0 in round five. That man couldn't be stopped. He was the best player out there. We talk about Bosco a lot, but Rampy is the main man for this team. There was a lot of conversation, of course, around the confidence that Super and the rest of his team had coming into this match. It's not overdone yet. We haven't finished. The Eastern Conference Finals are still happening. There is another map. What do we feel like needs to be the new transition as we shift gears here for the Sonics? Well, they're going to have to play in a fashion that we've never seen before. They're going to have to play unpredictable so yes. that Space Station can't anticipate their every move. They sort of had the, the rug pulled out from under them on Clubhouse, which is supposed to be you know, their map pick, one of their favored maps. But on Coastline, we've seen a lot of SSGs play on Coastline. We see how dominant they are on that map, but not a lot of play from Sonics. So I think that if Sonics have some pocket strategies, something we've never seen before, they could catch Space Station off guard. And like I said, Space Station it could fall victim to underestimating the Sonics, but with their current form, I don't think they will, but it's still possible. Yeah. Um, also on Coastline, this benefits Sonics greatly. I don't know why they chose Clubhouse at all. Anyways, against SSG. But Coastline is very different than Clubhouse. Clubhouse is textbook strategy. We know how to attack every site. We know how to defend every site. But Coastline, you can pick those weird operators, Lion and whatnot. You have a lot more roam game with Legion. Also, you can bring in Jackal if he's not banned. So if they want to win this next map and that fall 0-2, I'm going to see them pull everything out their books in order to try and take it to that third map. Taking a look at what the Sonics had from the KD stat line, not a single player finished with more kills than they did onto the desk. Everybody clearly needs to step up, but if you had to pick someone that really needs to be that X factor for the team, who are we going with here for the Sonics? I'm going to have to say Neptunes, like you said before. Neptunes is going to have to step in, come into his own, and just show you know, how good he really is. There were a couple times where he was getting frags towards the end of rounds, but it was just slightly too late. It's like it, he is definitely capable of being you know, that, that, that X factor for Sonics, but he just didn't seem to you know, fulfill that role. I think that moving into the next game and then maybe a map three if Sonics can win, they're going to have to play two map the two the best two maps we've ever seen them play better than the maps we saw them play against FaZe when they beat them in um I think it was the Dreamhack, right? Yeah. Yeah, when they, when they beat FaZe in the Dreamhack, that was a huge upset. Sonic showed that they have the potential to beat top tier teams, but I think that we're gonna have to see them play even better and just play the best we've ever seen the Sonic's roster play. I believe I heard Intero say that um, SSG, they had three flawless rounds, and a big part of that is the fact that Sonic's, they had no trades, they had no refrags, everyone were by themselves. Neptunes, Goddess, Super, all had bad games. You know what? Stick close to your teammates so that way, if you can't win a gunfight, maybe your homie in the back is going to be able to get that trade for you to help your team out. Well, I will say that I'm definitely uh, learning to lean a little bit farther down that Space Station gaming direction from what I had earlier in the weekend. And it's time to see if they can continue to impress the rest. As we head over now to map number two, that's it from us in the Analyst Corner. We're going to throw it back over to Intero and Emzo for the call on the game. Thank you very, very much from the desk. And is this going to be a quick 2-0? We don't really know. The Coastline stats on your screen. 
by just a hair, they favor Space Station. Not exactly a well-played map by either of these teams. 13 bands and 15 bands, respectively, for SQ and SSG. Though we did see Space Station beat Dark Zero on this map yes. yesterday. However, Dark Zero doesn't really play this map either. So the bands will heavily influence it, and momentum is going to be a big factor. In this case, I think it's undeniable that Space Station has the wind at their back. First band is going to be on Buck. Well, we know Rampy won't be playing that now. This was interestingly the decider as well yesterday for Sonics. They just didn't get to that map three. They got very close to getting there, but didn't. Jackal ban, not a huge surprise. We saw a lot of Jackal banning yesterday. You don't want to be dealing with them on this map. You already have enough troubles roamer as it is. You do not want your footprints tracked on top of that, of course. There are still other things to deal with, like Dokubi and Lion, whatnot, Gridlock as well. Valkyrie, though, not going to be something you have to worry about. So those outside cams. Not as much of a problem. You don't have to worry as much about the runouts, but there's still plenty of spawn peak angles that don't require having outside Valkyrie camps to really make those plays. Gridlock and Nomad are especially good operators here on this map. I would not be surprised to see them utilized along with Capitao as well. Mira being the final ban, which means that Echo and Maestro will be available. It's always nice to see Capitao available. I know people don't like dealing with it, but I really like seeing so, an operator that's, that's very, very utility heavy mm -hmm. rather than just frag heavy and, and really crucial utility, especially towards the end of rounds. We will see him picked by Bosco. No surprise there, though, as he goes actually over to the Dokumi. This is what he played very well yesterday on Coastline. Very good use of his smokes, but he also played the Capitao on the next map. Very good use of his smoke. So I got to imagine he's going to be supporting Canadian on those smoke plants, something he did quite a bit yesterday. We also get a sixth pick over to Castle. It is going to be Hookah. So we'll see where those castle barricades go. But Hookah, definitely a good bomb site all around. We've seen, I feel like, a bit more of a trend towards Jackers planting to inside Hookah, though, or at least fighting inside Hookah, as opposed to just billiards plants. Just typical default plants we've to see. Possibly one map away from crowning the uh, Eastern Conference champions to await the Western Conference champions later today, and then in the, uh, the ultimate grand finals of grand finals tomorrow. The ultimate. To see which team is... Uh, given the title of Team USA. It's definitely a good title to have, and this will be the second time uh, a team will be granted that. The first team having dispersed three of its members and only one of them remaining in the tournament at this point, as two of them got set home yesterday. That is true. Five seconds left before insertion. So we'll see if uh, SSG can continue their trend here on attack. We saw how poor the defenses were for Sonics on the last map, and this is already a map that can lean attacker heavy. Yeah. Sonic's not necessarily in the best position unless they can really catch the players of Space Station off guard. If there's going to be a map where the guns on the Sonics come alive, it's going to have to be Coastline. There's no way around it. You saw Rampy take over the game earlier today, the one that just happened, right? Match number one, map number one. My brain, so, so long. My brain stopped working for a second. <laughs> Yesterday, it was the Bosco slash Boss Goat story. Yeah. And part of what makes Space Station such a lethal team is that when they're actually playing well and not drawing online, when they play on LAN, they have so much depth. Yeah. You can see somebody like Foltz take over, thinking they can have some very clutch rounds. Rampy and Bosco can take over too. Canadian isn't really usually in a position to take over, but he's still quite reliable. That's, that's the important thing, is, is if you have teammates that can take over, you can be reliable. On the Sonics, you need players like Neptunes, like Slevin, like Gomfi, to shoulder most of that weight. Not saying that Super and Goddess won't, it's just that they're not usually in that position given the system that the Sonics play. And if you can contain Slevin and Gomfi, or if you can contain Neptunes and Gomfi, then there's a large problem that the Sonics will have. This is a frag-heavy map, we say it time and time again. The question is going to be, what can the Sonics do? Will we see the same patience yeah. that we saw in Clubhouse? Will there be some teeth to the defense and attacks from the Sonics? Uh, it's certainly going to need to be, as you said, being frag heavy because this is a smaller map with more difficult rotations and a lot of positions. You have to kind of fight your way out of spots. You can't just rotate back to site in a lot of positions. And a lot of the map now has been taken over by SSG. They, ha they are in control of the VIP penthouse theater area. And they're just going to work their way around to both sides with Canadian on luggage. Randy on the Aqua balcony as well, trying to fight Aqua. They do at least have a castle barricade, but that's actually going to work in their favor to some extent. Although Rampy going to go down. That is their soft structure down outside of Fultz, but traded back by Canadian. who cannot find the second just yet, but Bosco's there to back him up. You still got Fultz right now on essentially this hard angle watch, semi-flank watch. 
If you're going to see an execute happen, Smoke is playing inside of Pink, as you'd imagine him to be doing so, as a goo mine goes down and is immediately picked away at by Fultz. So there'll be clearer entry on in. Diffuser picked up, and now the cams will be theirs as well. You have the Maestro cams that will be very important. So you'll have likely Rampy sitting on that. Perfect time for the Toxic Canisters to go out. Canadian will die if he huffs in too many of those fumes. So where does he go? Well, that's why they juggled the Diffuser within the hands of Bosco. He's still got those two smoke grenades. Fultz sees an opportunity, and while he takes it, those for a second will not connect, trade it out, Slevin with two big kills on his own. And right in the middle of the smoke, it's Bosco going for the plant. Goddess and Slevin are completely blind. You're gonna rely on Canadian to be the one to cover. Bosco gets off the Diffuser, pulls out the C75, and runs out, but he'll get downed. So it's all on the shoulders of the Canadian himself. He'll rotate on back over to Aqua. Waiting to see one head Cannot land the shots. Diffuser being worked out. He punishes Slevin. He'll move on over. A double kill for him. Goddess versus Canadian, both on a tiny bit of HP. A huge clutch opportunity. He's just out of reach of Goddess. The timer is getting perilously low. Defender she has no idea where down. he is. She'll make a ton of noise. Head back to disable the Diffuser. She still has time. Canadian needs to get there, and here he goes. Vaulting on in. Close. Close, you gotta hurry, and there you go. He'll get it. Almost down to the wire. One second left on the timer. First round will go to Space Station. I mean, you, you called that earlier, the switch up. Having Canadian then play the window instead of playing for the diffuse plant, it's that Bosco-Canadian combo again. In this case, they just did a quick handoff. Bosco, you got the smokes. You can do this. I'll cover you from the window. The smokes are part of what made that work. And honestly, over the last two days, I, I felt like prior to this, this weekend that smoke plants were kind of dying off. SSG has just been a masterclass in smoke plants working. And it's down to that Bosco and Canadian team because Bosco will reliably get those smoke plants down. He's not the kind of smoke player who dies early in the round or makes misplays and ends up with a situation where they can't do that. Canadian, the same thing. He's not dying early as well. They're both very reliable in that because they have three very strong Defender, players to support the rest of it so they don't attackers. have to put themselves in compromising positions early on. Attackers and it's just so reliable that they're able to get those down. And then that, that, I gotta imagine the communication and coordination between those two as well. Very good for covering each other. And Canadian as well, just making the, the, the big brain plays there because that could have easily gone wrong for him with such little health against two players. Able to pull it off and just fantastic play. SSG, they did start in a tough spot, but they came out ahead and that's what matters. Goddess wasn't aware of Canadian's position after he'd rotated off of the big window in Hookah, right? He got off Repel the moment that Bosco died, and what does Canadian do? He assumes the same position that Bosco was in, which was at the Aqua Doorway. Slebin goes onto the Diffuser, and Goddess thinks that she needs to guard big window because you don't know where Canadian is. And because of the place it was planted, there's prime opportunity for the attackers to be able to shoot away at anybody who's disabling it, so. Well, I don't know if that fact will continue all eight sevens. Because, uh, I mean, I don't know, this was pretty close though, so it, entirely possible, I suppose, just because how close that first round was. We'll see if they can attack a little bit, or defend a little bit better here. Here's a fact. Bears eat beats. Bears beats. Eats. Battlestar Galactica. That's, that's a useful fact. I, I know I'm going to use that likely on a daily or every other day basis. Well, we'll see if uh, they're able to push in a little bit more effectively this time. Rampy, I believe, was the first to go last time. So maybe cooled off a little bit from the previous map. But he's still going to be looking to be the entry fragger here. Try and see if he can catch anyone off guard inside theater or penthouse. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. But rather than open the hatch, he's actually going to rotate around, do a bit more work. Now that they're droning for him, he's actually going to do some droning for himself just to cover his flanks. Can he time just clearing out as much as he can and then identifying the positions so they can set up the angles like we saw Canadian there who actually took over the cap tower role. Thinking they doing his job though, taking down Gonfi. Neptune's also at low health here. Could be, uh, yep, I was gonna say the next to fall and Thinking Nade, he's on a roll. Double kill for him this round. Looking like a smart start. That's through the wall onto pink. Now, given that it's a double bar defense, you're going to have defenders playing up top. They're going to be situated inside of pink. They're going to be playing over towards Hookah. And then they're going to be on cool vibe stairs. It's the Maestro of Goddess, and she's going to be able to mow anybody down that finds themselves unlucky enough to end up in her Alda crosshairs. Speaking of finding in their crosshairs, it's Slevin with two very big kills to immediately take us back to a 3v3. Doesn't take much time at all. And you've lost the Ash and the Zofia. Now Canadian on the run out from Slevin, three kills. He's on a heater so far in this round. He'll rotate over towards the pool table. He takes out Thinking Nade, but he'll get shut down. No ace for him. Bosco taking care of the hottest hand 
for the Sonics. 2v1. If there's anybody who wins these, it's Bosco. Just ask Dark Zero. Certainly possible here. Attackers He's got a plant, though, and he needs to get down to the site to be able to do that. While he's above it, that doesn't necessarily help you a whole lot here. He's got some possibility, but that is, it's not the, the best guns to frag out with. While the DMR can be decent if you can hit your shots against one person, fighting against two with either is not great because the CZ is going to burn through its ammo very quickly, and then you're left trying to switch to the, the uh, DMR or, you know, reloading in a tight spot. See his uh, Toby eye tracker there, just seeing where he's looking because this is going to be pretty pivotal where he actually identifies the players at because he can't drone for them. So he's going to use a phone call to try and help with that. He's got to make a play soon. He'll pull the DMR out and he knows that he has to enter through a single doorway that can be watched. Sprays at a wall waiting for the maestro to try and take him head on. Misses his shots. He's running out of time. And this should be a very easy hold for SSG. Bosco lines one up. The other one's prone on the ground and it's just going to be the clock that gets it for the Sonics. A second or two more. And maybe that becomes a 1v1 that goes either way. But the Sonics wear out the clock and they will draw even at one apiece. Well, that looks pretty good though for Bosco to potentially clutch that. He made the right decision and going for the frags, I think. But at the same time, like maybe he would have been able to stick a plant down. Definitely a very difficult to make those kind of decisions because you don't know where necessarily the players are. You know they're, they're playing back because you know they're not in blue bar, but mm -hmm. it, you just got to make a call at that point, besides the phone call, of course, that he made. Still a close round, two close rounds now, one of them going in favor of SSG, one in favor of Sonics. This does look like this could be a bit more of a close match all around on this map. Just hard to say whether or not it's going to go to either team. Canadian going to bring out the Nomad you mentioned effective on this uh, map. I mean, unless they rotate bomb. through the middle, there's a lot of constrained rotation bottleneck points that you can be using those air jabs at. A lot of good flanks you can cover, especially with only two sets of stairs. It does make it easier to be able to do that. And of course, only two floors as well. So Canadian, should he get in good positions to use those, can definitely set those up to really make a retech difficult if they're able to get control of the site. They are going to try that hookah again. Now they just defend successfully below. Now they're going to try and defend the top floor of that again. Now last time, did get uh, pretty close, thanks to Canadian's clutch. But we have Bosco playing the same smoke role again. Rampy, if he could step it back up, this round might not be as close. We did at least Five see thinking Nate step up in his stead. But Rampy has had a rough first two. Look at how much better the chances are for the Sonics when they allow their strong players or the superpower player of Slevin <laughs> to roam and do what he does best, kill things. How many opportunities did Space Station have to be able to drone him out of Hookah? He picked up two kills. You know where he's located. He's got the rotate from Hookah inside of Billiards. And what do you do? Nothing. You just continuously chase him head on 1v1. Canadian gets picked off as he was heading towards the double bars outside. A bit of an error from Space Station. And capitalized on very well by the Sonics, or rather not even the Sonics, but Slevin alone, who was largely unassisted, it seemed like. Yeah, he just made the, the right calls at the right time to get those racks. I imagine some of that on game sets. And Coastline is a map, like I said, where you're going to allow those fraggers to come alive. On a map like Clubhouse, things are a, a lot more, you know, contained. And you can't see somebody like Slevin be able to take full advantage on a roam because it's a lot easier to keep the control on a map like Clubhouse than on Coastline. One of the things that Flynn always likes to say is that Coastline is a map where you can rotate from one side to the other in seconds, and it's very true. Because of that giant skylight in the middle, you can drop from the second floor, you can get on over to the other side of the map, you can rotate over through luggage. There's so many flank routes, and it's very difficult for you to watch it if you're not a coordinated attacking team. It's why operators like Nomad and Gridlock are so popular. I like that despite the buck ban, Rampy still found a way to hit the ceiling by climbing on the bar there. <laughs> He's like, I'll still try and buck this as best I can. Well, they are starting to make some progress here, at least in below, to try and work towards the site. Bosco also covering the window into Hookah, and I think he needs to try and work on the door. But Bosco, with that DMR that I was talking about earlier, lands a shot before Rampy is traded off. And Slevin again on a roll, Fultz the next to fall. Uh, Rampy's just, he's not picking it up here, and now disadvantaged SSG. These were the two operators that Slevin was able to take care of before. Just narrowly missing a couple gunshots to Canadian's head as he looks to head in through the hookah doorway, and smoke will stop the defenders from being able to see any execute that's happening. Canadian realizes they need to move, so they'll head on over. Diffuser gets juggled. Canadian down below. He's so close to Slevin, I don't think he knows it. Slevin playing around. Canadian cannot hit the shots. He'll finally land them and down him. Thinking that there's going to be somebody coming from over on Cool Vibes. 
dropped his thinking nade, so he'll have to get picked back up from his ally while Bosco ensures that nobody jumps out to capitalize on this one. Diffuser is down as well. No air jabs remaining for Canadian, so he'll get his teammate back to full HP in a 3v3 with 30 seconds left. Tie game between these two teams, and the pressure from SSG is going to come from that hookah balcony. You don't have cool vibe stairs in your pocket the way that you want. That's still being held right now by the Sonics. Bosco looks like he might have gotten their feeds. No utility left from the attackers. This heavily favoring the Sonics. Unless they can win their gunfights, the SSG are in so much trouble, and they're not going to win any of them. Three perfect 1v1s for the Sonics to close out that round, and they have their very first lead of, these, of this series. Well, defense seeming to work much better on this map, and a big part of that definitely due to Slebin. His ability to play more flexibly. As you mentioned, Clubhouse being a lot more constrained, Slebin really couldn't come alive on that map and they've been able to unleash him on this map. His ability to run around and do what he needs to do, getting his opening picks, sometimes two, sometimes three, really making a difference. They're gonna have to do something to better contain him. And it's ironic given that they had the air jabs to be able to try and contain him. They had some utility as well as the phone calls. Despite those two things, they could not stop him from being able to move around the way they wanted. They really need to do something about him. But I also feel like if they take down Slevin early, we could see the rounds go SSG, much Attackers like we talked about before. So that's that's really what the mission is now. SSG's mission is kill Slevin, then go back to what you <laughs> Kill Slevin seems to be easier said than done. He's got nine kills over three rounds. Rampy had 11 kills over four rounds in map number one. Wow. This is what really helps Sonic's chances. You need players like that to carry this team. That's why you picked them up. That's why you brought them over here from Europe. Was to get Gompy and Slevin onto the scoreboard and they are playing so well on a map that you need to play well on. Absolutely, like we said, this is, tends to be a, a bit more attacker side a bunch of the time. So winning these defensive rounds is definitely vital to making sure you win as many as possible. Give yourself the advantage on the attacker side. But I mean, hey, if, uh, if SSG play the Roamers as well as Slevin's been playing, you know, it won't really matter. It will be very defensive sided either way. Yeah, you, have a, you have a defender sided coastline and you have an attacker sided clubhouse. That's how it goes, right? That's how it goes. Keep it, keep it mixed up, right? Here. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see that one every day. No, no, but no. That's, that's what I love about this game. It is very, very difficult. You never really know what's going to happen. It always makes our job interesting, that's for sure. It's, that's true. I, I, there's definitely a, a lot of other games I don't know if I could cast just because they far more predictable than this. Two one. days are never the same. Yeah. No two days are ever the same, so. Well, that doesn't bode well for Sonic because they won yesterday, so. Losing their opening fights so far, SSG need to find better gun skill on the engage, be it Rampy or Fultz, who've been dying too early too often through these three rounds, putting a lot of weight and an undue burden on the rest of the team. Being a little bit more cautious here, as an entry is going to happen over from Hookah and then inside of Sunrise Bar down below. The wall and kitchen's been opened up quite heavily, so you have to tread with caution. I think Fultz assumes that he has second floor control. Down goes Slevin. Oh, there it is. There's a huge sigh of relief if you're Space Station. You've got the opening pick, and it's on the most vital target. We'll see if that opens things up for them. That, who knows? It might not work out, but it's certainly the first pick that they needed. Thinking he's actually been showing up in, in Rampy's place quite a bit on this map. It's been good to see. I mean, you don't always have Fragger Thatchers, but there's definitely some players out there that who could be very standout Thatcher players in getting those kills. We'll see if Thinking Nate can keep it up. But now it's drone time. Figure out positioning. Neptune's also at the pulse is going to be trying to do the same against Space Station. There's a little bit of drone denial still left, as I imagine most of the pests were probably deployed. But it doesn't seem to really be slowing Space Station down. Rampy was almost droning himself in towards the office. They spot the pulse that's playing down there, and Neptunes will see anybody coming at a nine meter range before Space Station does. They've made the call, or at least Rampy has made the call, that, hey, I'm not going to bother to engage, so move on over. Somebody else spotted inside of delivery. There goes a smoke. Can't tell if it's super smoke or if the dough could be of Bosco's smoke. Fultz needs to watch Blue Bar as he sees the pulse. The UMP is not going to do much. It's just a scratch on the Fultz. It's the second kill for SSG. And now Fultz will watch the bottom panels that have been opened up inside of Kitchen. It's almost go time now for Space Station. 40 seconds left, and Goddess gets found by Rampy. Playing by the main door. How about a flawless round for SSG? They bounce back and tie the game up. Well, we know what the call is at the end of that round. Slevin, could you not die next round? Okay. <laughs> I think we would do a little bit better. But that ties it up. Like you said, Sonics had their first lead last round, but now they've lost it. They're going to have to reclaim that. Looking pretty good for the attack. If they can just hunt Slevin down. Now they know Slevin's playing very mobile. 
So they can pretty much count on him not being on site for the most part, as he not, has not really been playing there. So that is something they could use to their advantage if they are looking to hunt him down, is there are limited places you can be on this map. He's either going to be above or below site, or off on the other corner for the most part, as there's not a lot of in-between. He's also not likely to be in the courtyard for the most part. So because of that, they can start to cordon him off. He was a mozzie last time to try and help deny that, and this time they are going to have the mute jammer, but... It's, I, I, I got to imagine, just hunt him down. It, there are going to be other players potentially supporting him, but because he's playing relatively standalone, you can actually use that to your advantage in that you're less likely to be traded hunting him down on a two-man pinch. Although it was just that you needed to do it from upstairs last time. And that's the, that's the beauty of the, the courtyard from the attacker standpoint, is you can cut off a ton of rotation by just standing up there watching angles. We'll see them try bar again here. Their successful site, besides Hookah. And then, of course, they can go to Hookah again after this round. The thing with the double bars was that for a period of time, the double bars actually had the highest win rate for the defense. Mind you, it is a smaller pick rate than we see from Hookah and we see from the kitchen sites. Penthouse Theater is basically gone from the meta. It, for a period of time, was one of the most played sites and in ranked slash competitive play outside of top tier professional competition. It's still very favored, but a large part of that is if Mira is available. This is uh, a dynamic meta, meta wise. Yes, coastline has changed quite a lot. And the way that the double bars are defended, there are so many different ways that teams play the double bars. You can bring a castle, you can set up up top, you can set up down below for a retake, you can play off site and open up all the walls. There's so many opportunities on the double bars, which I think can be an awful challenge for the attackers to be able to crack that map. In this case, they couldn't crack it, as SQ won their very first round on this site. Stay back. One thing they don't do super well, though, is guarding blue bar. They don't They don't play super heavy defense in that. I think they're going to look to that as an opening if they can clear office and take uh, you know, control of blue bar in terms of the walls that they have to worry about firing in from the other side in Sunshine Bar. I think they can take it for a plan, potentially. But of course, they've got to clear enough players out and get enough map control to make that happen. Maybe open up some angles here with the Havana. I think it was Thinking Nate who actually got the early pick on the double bars exactly here into the wall, but I don't know if it's been opened up. It actually looks like it might have sheathed off a lot of the wood. It's still pretty solid. There could have been an impact grenade that was tossed at it to take the Xkairos off. We must have missed that one. Castle Barricade inside of Aqua will also stop Space Station for the time being, but it's Rampy there. He's got a sledgehammer. He gets outdueled by Neptunes with the UMP, who will then get spotted and immediately head in the other direction. Foltz needs to be very careful because he's got a bunch of punch holes, he's got an opening in the wall, and the Jaeger of Gomfi will scurry off after taking a beating from Rampy. Or Foltz, rather. Foltz engaged yet again, not able to land the shots, and I don't think he sees anybody over towards Billiards. Neptunes vanquishing thinking made. So that castle playing very effectively inside of Aqua. He can be a kind of an expendable roamer as well. He usually gets his utility set up and then, you know, you just let him roam around. If he can get some kills, great. If not, not a big deal. Fultz at least taking down Gonfi, but still not a great trade. The fact that a castle has taken yeah. down two of your players and you just killed the Yaker who most likely also had his setup just completed. You're not really gaining a ton here, so pretty big disadvantage. Not to mention Fultz also had a bit of damage as well and still some castle barricades left up. See the situation here inside of the mudroom, as it's often called. Well, Fultz waiting for the daggers. call to spring into action with Canadian there, who backs up. Nitro Cell goes out, Mute manages what? to win the fight. Super gets it, but Canadian sprays him down, can't beat Goddess in a 1v1. Bosco gets run out on, and he'll have to immediately turn and look to see if they can catch him. The Legion will win the fight, though. Slebin, he's been so good this map, but he's going to continue it. This is the best that we've seen from the Sonics so far today. They regain the lead, 3-2. Big plays from Neptunes, though. Those opening picks really set the tone for oh, the Oh, absolutely. And you're right, very expendable. As a castle, once your barricades are up, you're gonna be playing for time. You're not gonna be playing with a good weapon. You will likely have some denial with those impacts if you haven't already used them for rotations, and that's it. You are an expendable player at that point, as you were very correct, or expendable operator, rather. And he certainly made it uh, seem like he was not willing to die. No. So, good on him. Didn't have to be the Slebin show that round since he showed up. But nonetheless, Slebin did live for quite a while and it made things difficult for SSG. Managed to get a kill towards the end there, I believe, as well. But that bar rush, a bit of a misplay. 
running up like that and then just not i mean that's the problem is when you sprint it reduces your ads time you got air you know increases you've got to deal with trying to ads out of a sprint and a vault in that position not the smartest thing to do without some kind of stun going off first to be able to stop them from being able to react you know in a timely manner also you got to worry about coverage from the door which ended up being a problem you got slub now this time on the full roam strap with the vigil why not might as well it's gonna be a hookah defense so Slebin can play below and still distract and take yeah, away from the fact that you're going to need to drone him out you predicted correctly hookah opened back up sonics waste no time to go back there so it's going to be the very final defense for sq on a hookah play before the side swap for ssg if they emerge three three tied up with the sonics i think that's a win for both of these teams it really depends i'm going to be completely honest with you I think Sonics have the upper hand in this matchup so far. We'll see if the sides have played into it at all. But if Slevin continues playing as hot as he has, and if Rampy and Foltz continue to be as ineffective and are getting shut down as consistently as they are, then we end up on map number three with Consulate being the decider. I, I mean, I think that's the big factor right there, Slevin and Rampy. One is hot, one is not. The opposite of last map. Yep. And we saw how last map ended up, so I feel like if that could reverse it, if Rampy could ramp it up, really, and and actually get some kills instead of being the opening death of most of the rounds, I see this shifting quite a bit, which is, it's odd for someone who's an entry fragger to lose so many entry kills on a map where, again, you can constrain the roamer so much, and they have the ability to make those phone calls, for example, to help him out. It just seems like maybe he's focused on other jobs or just trying to clear certain areas without focus on drone play and, I don't know, game sense at this point. It's just not working, so hopefully he can refocus himself. Honestly, I feel like if another round is lost by Space Station, call a timeout at that point. Refocus the team. I know you're not way behind, but I think mentally they need to, they need to recollect themselves. The only timeout that was taken was the Sonics in round number five of map one. Neither team has yeah. used a timeout since then. Keep in mind that you have one timeout per map per team. So the Sonics can still take one if they find themselves in free fall. Space Station can take one if they really need. The question that comes into taking things like timeouts are, well, do you do it after you swap sides or do you do it at the end of a particular round knowing that you've only got one defense left, etc. There's a point that was actually raised on Twitter by uh, I think it was, I, I can't remember who, but it doesn't really matter. This is a double swing from Sonics after the frag grenade finds its target. Bosco gets rid of Neptunes and two kills from Space Station on an effective entry as they are knocking on the door of Hookah. Right next to the barricade is Super, who eats a bit of damage, but manages to remove Canadian. Down goes the Zofia, so you've seen some roll swaps to a certain extent. Foltz grabs Slevin, and this round is all but over with 40 seconds left. Another peek right into Foltz. That's a nice clean shot. Super's got the only kill for his team. Logic Bomb going off. He swings in, but he's going to have to reload. Toxic Canister as he panics. He has nowhere to go. Nowhere to go but down. It's going to be 3-3 at the split. And that's not a bad split to be in for either team, really. While well, it didn't work out great for Super in the end, I really like that setup, though. I like the way they use the castle barricade, the one reinforced wall, and then the shield on the soft wall opening to be able to play Aqua in a way that's very different than they're used to. That does give them a little time to set up in the room in that uh, you are castle barricading off some angles that let them play in there without having to worry as much about angles. But at the same time, you saw what happened when they got too comfortable in there. That deployable shield allows you to rotate into Aqua pretty much unseen. Super took advantage of that. Caught them completely off guard. I mean, thankfully he hit the shield as he died, basically, to be able to take out that shield so it wasn't a problem later. But that's, I don't know, I mean, that's just uh, not great to be able to play against. We'll see how Hookah goes here for SSG. But overall, I think we've seen some great strategy and some great play from Sonics on their defense. If they can keep that up on attack, we can see that three. But if the side switch really just turns things around, eh, might not make it that far. I think the first couple rounds are going to be a major deciding factor here. Does Space Station stick with it? Are they able to stay focused? They just grabbed the last round before the swap. Are they able to punish the Sonics? Or are the Sonics going to continue to play as they have? And largely, is Slebin going to continue to play the way that he has? The rest of the team needs to step up. You need big rounds from Neptunes. We saw it from the castle play that he did when he said he was expendable. At least last Expendable. time from Foltz. And yeah, Foltz, Foltz stepping up big. Rampy and Foltz being your opening deaths, not ideal. No, that was definitely the opening kills from them that round. And that's what you like to see. I mean, one of them was a grenade, I believe, onto the player behind bar. So that was a little bit more of a predictable kill. But nonetheless, that's better than being the opening death by far. 
Very correct. The round breakdown showing the story here is there's been no objective play whatsoever. We saw the diffuser go down in round number one, and since then there's been absolutely nothing else other than just punching one another relentlessly over and over and over again. We do see a gridlock come out. I was wondering when we were going to see her. We saw Nomad earlier from Canadian. I think he was, she was played, what, one round, and that was it. Excellent anti-flank work with those track stingers. The first point of contact, as it's going to be a hookah defense, will be down below, towards the offices, where SSG have set themselves up as sort of a beachhead. I like that he's got the angle and the rotate into blue bar to use as well. But it's soft and we see players pinch there. And the support from above on the hatch, I think will definitely help if Fultz can pull it off from the mock Aqua. There's many angles being held here from SSG and they might be able to land a shot or two. Will somebody dare peek Canadian? He has to scramble off as his phone finally silences. He's got Rampy not too far, just inside of security. Watching the window, Goffy will be able to win this fight against Canadian. All it's going to take is a shot or two, and Goffy knows he's there. Sees the leg of the Mozzie. Canadian doesn't know where he's coming from, but instead it's going to be Slebin who springs into action, and Rampy has to get out as quickly as he can through security with Slebin hot on his heels. Back up the luggage stairs he'll go. Slebin will lose his target, but the opening frag to Sonics with 90 seconds in. You've got some of the lower, I guess, lower floor presence taken care of. Next task for the Sonics is going to be on Aqua. Neptune's engaging, losing some HP. Super and Goddess have also taken some damage too. But these are just, it's just oh. a flesh wound. There goes Fultz in Aqua. That is gonna be, like you said, check number two on a check mark. They've also got window control now of Billiards. I think Rampy's gonna have to make a big play here because you cannot depend on just Bosco to be able to hold that out. While I say Bosco's dependable, it, you just can't count on it. And Rampy to go down here, not gonna help. Thinking Nate at least showing up for his team, but it's a 2v4 thinking Nate at half health now. This is not looking like a space station round. Can't see through the debris that's in front of him. Bosco holding the angle over towards the common spot. He'll hear the barbed wire getting struck at least once or twice. 40 seconds left, upside down. Repel will be a thorn in the side of Thinking Nate. Onto the cams and all the information that was given from them, now gone. Keep in mind that with access to the phones from Slevin, that the intel from Space Station is gone. Heating up, looking to try and regain the lead are the Sonics amidst the smoke. It's going to be Thinking Nade. He'll cut Gumpy down, or rather, that's going to be Bosco. Super finds Bosco, so Thinking Nade will have to survive for the time being. Diffuser down, so there goes some objective play. But it doesn't really matter. It, Goddess picks up two kills, was instrumental in getting the Diffuser down. A tremendous round from her, and once again, the lead goes back to the Sonics. Thinking Nate literally ran past the diffuse getting planted. Yeah. And then turned around and went, oh, it's there. Oh, is that where it was? That was uh, a huge misplay there. And that could have easily been the round. Could have taken the diffuser down and just hid at that point and would have been enough. So, gonna be kicking himself for that round because that definitely could have been an SSG round as that was a great clutch attempt. But just, yep, a little bit of misplay there. We'll see how they do on Kitchen though. Hookah Attack definitely wasn't their sight. And, and again, Sonics with their third lead of this match. As they continue to one-up SSG in what could be, finally, a map here for Sonics. I mean, I don't know. It, it, I, I definitely could see some overtime here, the way things will be going back and forth. But if we could see Sonics string two rounds together with a lead, that could take them to that seven while uh, SSG sits at five. And that would be enough to close things out Move to map three. I like that we're playing the three C maps too. So many, so many maps to start with. A C. It's nice when that happens, and it does tend to happen like all in the Ten same day. And, and they're all good maps. Yeah. Thoughtslet will be very unpredictable with these two teams. Yeah, I, w I mean, I would like to see. I, I would like to see this be a nice back and forth match and get to that point. And it's certainly looking to shape up that way so far. If Space Station can't really get a handle on, again, Rampy and Foltz making plays. We'll see how Kitchen goes, though. I mean, we have yet to see a full rotation, to, or as you put it, the, the cycle the completing. The cycle! So, for those that are not uh, not the keenest, a cycle is when you win all three of your defensive uh, sites in a row. We say a cycle because when you win a certain site, you have to go to two more sites before you can go back to that first site. So, therefore, you need to play three Attackers sites. So the cycle is win three separate Attackers sites. There you, go. there you go. Wasn't as easy to describe as I hoped. That drone will just scoot on by the vigil of Canadian. Slebin again will try inside of office to find the opening frag and the opening pick. He has been instrumental in his team's success, and if he cools off, with that go the chances of Sonics, or at least with the way that they're playing so far on Coastline, somebody else will need to step up. 
You noted that it's a kitchen defense. Attack Where's the attack going to come from? From the Sonics? Well, it's going to come over from the double bars. Usually a pretty safe place to go. You don't often have to worry too much about any pressure up top. Thinking Nate gets one. He knows he's under fire, but his team's there. Thinking Nate 2 removes the head of Neptunes. 2v5, looking to equalize. Goddess and Slevin, just the two of them. They'll take out Rampy. Down goes Slevin. Goddess on Cool Vibe stairs, and it is not cool, kids. It is not cool at all. Dead. Space Station, take the rep. Bosco says, run cool, stay in school. Speaking of school, yeah. uh, can we get a congratulations, Bosco? Yeah. Missing his graduation to compete in U.S. Nationals, but while being a professional Rainbow Six player, finishing his degree. Very admirable. So congr congratulations, congratulations, Bosco. Yeah, well done. That is not an easy achievement to play at this level. No, of not at all. It takes a lot of time. And school, I believe, also does take a lot of time. So, well done. Shows you can do it. Shows you don't need to choose one or the other necessarily. But that was a good round for SSG all around. Good coverage. It was really the, the duo of Thinking Aid and Rampy covering Bar. And Lycan. Yeah. And Lycan, I forgot. And, yeah. Lycan. Oh, Lycan, Lycan, graduated. Lycan also graduated. Yeah. Yeah. Big brain on that guy. I'd like to know what uh, degrees they graduated. I, I didn't. Bosco Engineering. I can't remember what Lycan's was. Well, fantastic. Some big brains on them. Both. Yeah, not, by the way, just casually playing Rainbow Six as a, as a competitor and also getting an engineering degree. Yeah, extra hard. It's a, just a normal day. Yeah. <laughs> just a very normal day. Just totally cool, normal, easy degree. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Interesting that Sonic's going to be the one to take the time out. I think they need to at this point. That round fell apart for them really quickly, and they've got way more pressure on their shoulders than SSG does. SSG took map one. Obviously, they're not the team that's going to be staring down defeat. Even if they lose coastline, you still got console. And Space Station are a very good team on Consulate. Dark Zero banned Consulate against Space Station, if I remember correctly. I think, I think it was. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I didn't uh, get the who banned which map down. Not entirely certain. Could we see? Um, well, that was from yesterday. We didn't cast that match. I meant, I didn't mean today. I meant like. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was reasonably certain that Dark Zero banned Consulate against Space Station. Makes sense. SSG played on console, if I remember, uh, quite well at OGA Pit, so that stands to reason. So, nine kills for Slevin in the first three rounds. The next five rounds, two kills. So I think it's safe to say at this point, he's cooled off. Additionally, at the bottom of the scoreboard with two kills, Neptune's Gompy with four. Therein lies a significant problem for the Sonics. Your fraggers, their guns have gone flat. Yeah, it's it's all in Slevin. located by attackers. And I mean, you hate to see it, but we saw it yesterday as well. It seems to be the pattern is Slevin was definitely a great pickup for the team, but the rest of the team needs to pick it up as well. Yeah. So we'll see if SSG can capitalize on that. We saw some rounds where they took him out early and that just crumbled after that. Last round, he did manage to get a good flank to try and pick things back, but then once he was traded off, again, fell apart. So, we'll see. We are going to interestingly see a ward in this round. We haven't seen a ton of use of it. We've seen a little bit yesterday, but we didn't see it really terribly effective uh, in terms of where you're playing it. I mean, there's certain certain places you know you're going to get to use it, which is, you know, the, the laxing play of it on the server stairs on bank. That's a good example. Other sites, not always as uh, useful necessarily. Canadian and Rampy were the two lowest performing players for SSG yesterday, but have led the way today with a combined 34 to 19 scoreline. Fact! There you go. Well, Rampy at least made up for you know his performance with last map, but fact. There you go. Fact. I feel like every time I see that, I want to be like, fact! Just like points. Yeah. Coming straight at your eyeballs. Once again, that just touches on the depth of SSG. And I mean, I feel like a chump now because I said, you know, oh, Canadian, you know, he's not really in a position, blah, blah. And now he's doing really well. <laughs> he's also switching up a lot in terms of uh, dropping the diffuser and having other people pick it up or playing a little bit different roles as necessary. Mm -hmm. He's playing a little more flexible in that sense. And there are more aggro roles, I would say. And a, a Coastline is a map where you don't need a dedicated Hard Breacher. If you've noticed, there's been minimal Hard Breacher usage. It's mostly been a Habana, maybe for the walls on pink. That's about it. Uh, the drone of Neptunes, that's a visual glitch for those that are curious. It is not traveling through the floorboards, nor through time and space in the galaxy far, dimension. far away. Yeah, that's... <laughs> First logic bomb is Slebin entries down below all by himself. He's not droned in. In fact, most of Sonics on these two rounds have not been the best with their drones in comparison to what we've seen of their opponents. It's Rampy being hunted inside of the courtyard as the vigil. Cloaking device not active. Is there anybody from the Sonics who will be able to strike? 
There's a lot of time being wasted. And Rambi might end up walking right into Slevin's waiting arms, but instead goes the other way. That's always helpful. I mean, I, I would like to see some, some Rampy Slevin duels on this map. It would be nice, given the way that these two have been playing so far. And Super almost taking Rampy out. Rampy decides to re-engage with Canadian. Super gets one, Slevin gets the other. This is great teamwork from the Sonics. They'll grab a third with Gomfy as Bosco's been down. Diffuser goes down. How did this happen so quickly? Thinking Nade punishes one, he'll have to pick Bosco up and try to give his team the best shot he has. But he thinks otherwise. See Super on Cool Vibe Stairs, can't win it. It's Neptunes who actually gets credited with the kill for Bosco. And Super on Cool Vibe Stairs. He just needs to survive. Sonics take the lead again. It's a pendulum between these two teams, back and forth and back and forth. I mean, I'd say the timeout helped, but it, it's pretty much continuing the pattern that we saw before, Yeah, which is not looking good for the defenses of SSG, which Sonics did by far better. It's, uh, I mean, this is troubling. Now they're gonna go to a third site here. This is, will Bar be the difference maker here? Because if not, this, this map could actually be over a lot quicker than I would have expected. Certainly could be. I mean, again, we, though, we haven't seen yet two rounds in a row from either team. It's been back and forth, back and forth, with the exception of Sonics of, at the start. Yeah, the round two and three. Yeah. That was one exception. When okay, they got their first the lead that they've been rel relatively they maintaining. A very low tempo team as well, as you can see, low energy. They haven't really been phased too much by it, whereas where is Space Station's enthusiasm that we saw in map number one? Not quite as dominating a performance as I think people had expected, and that's how best of threes work, though, right? Yep. You get to ban a map you never play right away, and then you're probably going to have to play a map that you don't usually play. Be a tough situation for teams that are not the most prepared. But both of these teams have a deep map pool, or at least should. Space Station probably having among the deepest map pool in North America, given the fact that the core of this roster has been together for so long. Canadian coming in as an addition didn't really change all that much about the actual squad. So, I remember watching Most Wanted playing Coastline as one of the memorable matches uh, when they were back when they were Most Wanted. It's true. It's crazy. Yeah, I remember we. Uh, I remember back in the days when this Space Station roster was what? It was Ferocity, and then it was Bittersweet, and then it was Most Wanted. And then it was Space Station, if I remember correctly. I think it was probably the next one. I don't, I don't recall for sure if there was one in between. Some, some teams go through a lot more org changes than others. Back when King Leo was on this squad. That's a, that's a name. I miss King Leo. King Leo Bible Thumb, yeah, I believe, is, is, what the, is what would be said on Twitch <laughs> chat, so. Mozzie Pests will deny Goddess an opportunity to drop the drone down into the site. Now there's another pest that'll stop it. I don't know if the drone actually got caught by the pest or not. That's an error from Gomfy, and that drone is as good as dead as it is in no man's land. Good on Canadian then with those pest placements. Rather than playing the Vigil, just denying the drones a different way. Yeah. Seems smart. And deliberately done in an area so that you can't go through there. And we talk about Castle Barricades being you know, done to funnel the attackers through places where you want them to go. Mozzie Pest's very similar. You either lose the drone, or you have to play in a certain part of the map where the defenders want. Or you just shoot the pests and possibly end up in an engagement. Because you will see teams sit over top of the pests, and the moment that you go to shoot that pest, they're there to get you. Canadian C4 will find Gomfy opening frag for Space Station, and well, would you look at that? It looks like we might swing back and forth. Who knows exactly? That's inside of Aqua, and it's Gomfy down. He had entered on his own, and like I said, not as much effective droning from the Sonics as I would hope to see. They mostly drone each other in. That wasn't a kill on Slevin, though, so this still could go either way. That's very true. That's very, very true. Neptune's still up as well, and then Goddess has been getting her frags on both defense and on attack. Gridlock is a very formidable operator. Excellent gun utility to boot. Set. I would say Eclipse is probably the standout Gridlock player. In I would say Nello. Oh, in North, North America. America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, I would agree with that. One minute to go in round number 10. Slevin is almost inching his way on up. Takes the head off of thinking a beautiful shot. Must have been called out after Super was dropped. Prompting the reload. And he can just survey all of the sites. Rampy is off. Behind, down goes Sleb into Fultz. They're all over the place. Space Station cannot be tracked. And it looks like we're going to have yet another tie between these two teams. 30 to go and an onerous task in front of Sonics as they're over by the double bars. It's a Goddess and Neptune's duo with some long angles being held from Space Station deep inside a kitchen and no real sense of urgency from the Sonics. I think they are well aware that this is a, I guess you could say, fruitless endeavor. 
Stuns go out, but there's still a reinforcement that you're going to have to go through. Fultz just absolutely gasses Neptunes. And down goes Goddess to Canadian. Back tied up again, Devin. Five, five. I see a pattern here. I, you know what? I see one as well. Again, who can string two in a row after that early one that we saw from Sonics? I mean, if SSG could do the same, then they'll be in the lead. Mm -hmm. and that's what you need. But I'm, I'm seeing that over time. Unless something changes here, mathematically we see that over time. Because we have the five here from SSG if we get the lead taken again by Sonics, that puts it at six, at which point it's either overtime or we go to map three. Uh, we haven't really seen Sonics be able to string two together again, so then it's likely we end up in overtime. And then it depends on who gets what side. I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, Sonics have been good at both sides, really. Defenders, so protect your bombs I don't know if there's necessarily, I mean, attackers. defense, I guess, would be a little bit of a more favored side for them. But at the same time, they've shown they can adequately do both. So they're not as much of an, at a disadvantage in overtime in that sense. It's been far more of a team effort for the Sonics on attack. It was the Slebin show on defense. On attack, it has been Neptune's doing work, attack Goddess doing work, Super doing work, Gumpy doing work. Slebin has semi fallen off, four kills in you know, the five rounds, four rounds technically, as this is round number five that they have on attack. So. Something to consider. Bomb by the teams also get to pick which side they go to in overtime. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah. Do they want to go to attack twice? Do they want to go to defense twice? Five seconds to insertion. Well, Canadian going to be back on that vigil. I still think he's doing a bit better as the Mozzie, but attackers are moving. Decisions being made. I mean, the only problem is as the uh, the vigil, he doesn't get the C4, and we know how effective Canadian can be with C4. Reloading. So, still think the Mozzie might have been a little bit better, but see what they do here on kitchen. He's just going to again try and distract them as long as he possibly can. He's also playing a risky angle onto the door. If they go for a pre-fire, they can find him, but no, he's the one to find them. Oh, two quick kills. SSG has not won two rounds in a row yet. This is their best chance, and it's gonna get even better for them now. 2v4, Neptunes and Slebin, both of whom have taken a bit of a beating. Behind the shields, the smoke will ring out in front of Neptune. Slevin entry solo. He knows he's got one inside of Sunrise because of the audio cues from his logic bomb. Down goes the shield, and damage will continue to go to Slevin as he steps in a goo mine. It's just a waiting period now for SSG. They don't need to commit anything. Canadian inside of the main lobby, fondly referred to as the Lamborghini doorway with the drone underneath it. He'll take the drone out, and once again, Sonics are going to have to just twist and turn, and I don't think they know where to go. No, it's definitely going to be a, a difficult one for them to be able to pull off here. Uh, perhaps they, yeah, they still have one logic bomb, two smoke, so they have utility. They have a claymore as well, which probably should get set down here at some point when they decide where they want to attack from. Like, kitchen window's good. Canadian had a nice bait on that yesterday. But at the same time, this is, this is tricky. You, they have a minute and a half to work with, though. So they have enough time to make a decision, but they've got to make a decision. Unless uh, someone from SSG just wants to throw a free kill their way. One logic bomb and two smoke grenades are all you have for utility as Neptunes is starved and completely depleted from that lifeline. The only real way I see Sonics taking this round is if Space Station makes some stupid mistakes. Peak a little too early. Don't fight for a refrag. You have a 4v2 advantage. You don't need to give them anything. The patience that we saw from the Sonics on Clubhouse is something that we also see from SSG. And a beautiful shot. Canadian, a massive round. And it's match point for Space Station. Their first time winning rounds back to back. And they have the opportunity to become your Eastern Conference champions and knock the Sonics out. Well, I uh, take back my words for questioning Canadian's vigil play there. <laughs> Fantastic job, but it was him playing in a spot they really didn't expect for the opening picks onto the doorway. But it was also a huge misplay droning with the, or, uh, pushing in without the information from droning <laughs> to be able to make that play. I mean, there's a drone hole right there in bathroom. So if you drone in there and you get a strong signal from vigil, Putting yourself in the doorway, not a great idea. So, either way, bad decision punishes them. And as you said, first lead for SSG and the most important lead, and that is match point. That's the only lead you need if you could follow it up with one more round. But that means three rounds in a row would have to come from SSG here. Otherwise, we go to overtime. Attackers so, entirely possible, and I'd say at this point, likely we go to overtime. Unless SSG builds up some real momentum there. But again, they, they're not taking their timeouts here, interestingly enough. Here. If the Sonics win this round. We will have a perfect mirror, or I, I guess it would be, what is it, a palindrome? It's when it's the same forward as it is backwards. Yeah, it's palindrome. So if the Sonics win, we'd have a palindrome on these 
at least from the way that my sheet looks right now, with the way that these rounds went. Taco Cat. A what? You ever heard that palindrome? Taco Cat? Oh, yeah. Hey, I just like race car. I just like picturing a cat in a taco. I don't know, floating Five through space. To go. Absolutely. The rainbow behind it. Yeah, I mean, Pop Tarts don't like, get all the fun. Yeah. Is Rampy about to peak to possibly put a nail in the coffin of the Sonics? Well, you think that would have been Fultz on that dock to be the one going for the peak? Conference championship point right now for Space Station. Sonics on attack, as usual, their last opportunity to stave off defeat at the hands of Space Station, who would earn a berth tomorrow in the Grand Finals, a best of five. Oh, this, is, this is for all the smack talk that Super can do. He really needs to pull it ahead here. At least get that overtime going. He certainly doesn't want to go out in a 2-0. The U.S. Nationals Finals, technically, I guess, or the Nationals Finals. Super. Trying to at least make a play here. He's got some idea what they're going to be dealing with. They could even potentially spot Rampy. He's got the uh, was it ERC-7, I believe it's called. The cloaking device being held off. And I imagine for the Sonics, you're going to see an awful lot of patience from them in a bit of a gun-shy play here as they know that everything is on the line. Super takes a little bit of damage in an engagement down inside of Sunrise Bar. Opening pick goes to Rampy. There's one from Canadian, too. The Sonics will lose Goddess and Neptunes as SSG are just a few kills away from being champions on their side of the conference. Slevin will use a logic bomb to assist the other two members of the team. And because the floor's been shot open, Super, who still sits and waits down in Sunrise Bar, will know that somebody's there. Two combines get hit, and Canadian knows he's gonna get swung on. Rampy guns down Slevin. He's playing in a position. There's one inside of luggage. Gomphy takes damage. Impact gets tossed out. Rampy downed. Gomphy's downed as well. It's super in a 1v4 with Space Station looking for total liftoff. Nobody from Space Station needs to peek at all. One minute for Super to try and pick Gomphy back up. He was downed by Rampy. The crowd getting into this knowing that this might be it for the Sonics. And this is a tough spot to be in if you're Super. I think he's going to try to get Gomphy up. I think that's the only thing he can really do here is he's just bled about 15 seconds off of the clock. He'll swing on in. Is there anybody watching? No, there isn't. Because, of course, the bomb site is on the other side. He's been spotted by the cam, and the moment he goes to pick up Gomphy, he might have his back turned. Nobody's there. Look at the patience from SSG. Gomphy is up. The crowd chanting, send them home. Will SSG be able to do just that? Still patience from Space Station. 30 seconds remaining. Gunfire rattling on out. Nobody from SSG giving the Sonics an inch. There goes a Gumai. Canadian knows he hears it. He misses his shots. Traded out, though. And there you have it. Your Eastern Conference champions are Space Station. They'll play for it all tomorrow. So long. Farewell, Sonics. 2-0 for SSG. SSG going from not being able to string two rounds in a row to stringing three where it counted most to secure the win. Fantastic play for them and a huge threat for whoever they're gonna be up against next. They play the victor of TSM versus Reciprocity, which will be coming up in a couple of minutes once we go through the whole rigmarole, getting the teams off the stage, getting new teams on. The Sonics started out so strongly on Coastline. They looked a little restless on Clubhouse and frankly, not as effective as they could have been but the team got quiet and the guns just were not alive through the latter portion of that particular map. A tough one for the Sonics who looked like they were able to push SSG to consulate, but no third map on the menu. Tell you what though, in the future when it comes to the Sonics, don't sleep on Slevin. That man was an absolute gem of a pickup. He is really shining on this team. If the rest of them, as you said, could step it up completely, it's gonna be fantastic. Don't sleep on the super power player, but we got Rampy on the stage. We'll toss it down to Jackie and hear his thoughts and her comments on the match. Thanks so much, you guys. Well, it sounds like the crowd was on y'all's side. Could you feel that energy? Yeah, we could hear them in our comms. Seriously? Yeah. Wow, props to y'all, right? And they're getting loud. Is it because he had an 11 kill streak? You played fabulously. I, I want to ask you, you know, you seem to return to form today. What changed from yesterday? I don't know. Yesterday, I've been a little sick, so yesterday was just an off day for me, so today felt good. 
Okay, so since you're not feeling well, let me ask you a complicated question. No, I'm kidding. You can keep this one fast. We did notice that you guys picked coastline. Typically, you guys ban that. So can you explain what that, why you guys decided to go with that decision? I think we pick club. Do we not? Oh, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, maybe I got my C's mixed up? Okay, so um, never mind. C's, that was my bad. Okay, um, so talk to me a little bit about how you guys are feeling now. You uh, fell short in Croatia, and now you guys are moving into the finals. So what's going to be different this time around? Uh, we're going to win this time. Why? We're, we're ready. Okay. And um, who do you guys expect to see in the finals? And why do you want to see them or not see them, I guess? I think we're going to see Rec. Are you excited for that? Yeah, I like the Rec guys. I'm, I'm excited to play them. Okay, well, fantastic playing. Clubhouse, Coastline. Oh, my God.